for their presentation. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Yeah. So myself and Sonia are going to do a public services department. We join together, and so you're going to get both of our budget requests um, together. So we're just going to kind of swap them off and on. Mm -hmm. Go to the next slide. Hold on, there's still public services, right? Is it? Yeah, we're changing it. It's coming. We could do this on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sure. So. Go for it, Chief. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> awesome. You got the thing up though. Good job. <laughs> Perfect. There it is. Good job, team. I think they're going to keep you around now. <laughs> so, um, like what I stated, since you all know, you know, his department and my department report, we work together. So, whatever happens in police world affects what the court does. So, that's why we're going to do this emphasis on just public safety. So I'll go ahead and start with my 2021 and 2022 accomplishment. We uh, implemented the adult provision services in 2021, in the summer of 2021, we contracted with Cassandra Belugia. Um, we also established a partnership with Love Abounds Here, which is a 501c organization to provide resources for our court defendants. They did uh, set up uh, tables in the lobby for the first time on September the 1st, court date. And I believe it was a success. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And so uh, they have been able to uh, reach out to some of our court defendants and let them know that, hey, there's court coming up. Sometimes they lose their paperwork, they lose it. And so uh, Love Abounds here yes. is great in providing uh, those reminders, amongst other things like housing or health care um, and things like that. So it's been a great partnership. Um, we extended path for services hours, bringing more revenue to the city. So we used to do only uh, mornings of Tuesdays and Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and now we provide Tuesdays and Wednesdays still, but it's an all-day thing. So we um, bring in a lot more uh, revenue to the city that way. We implemented the pile Silla. Uh, it's a pile share program uh, together with the help of um, IT. And this is to provide electronic paperwork to our attorneys that way we're not having to email back and forth discovery to them to a uh, prepared for court. So that was a great addition as well. Uh, I worked together with the administrative office of the course to update our much needed local law table. There was a lot of uh, laws in there that were outdated. They were, we weren't using them anymore. So we worked together and it's been updated. And a copy of that updated uh, law table was provided to the police department so that I can assist them um, as they're writing citations. Okay, as far as the police side for the 21 22 accomplishments, uh, in July of 21, we had a lot of law changes. And we successfully transitioned through those new legislative law changes, and it's been an ongoing process um, because there was quite a few. It was a lot of, uh, for a lot of folks out there, it was different for them to have to. To follow those new legislative changes. So, that transition, we've done that successfully. Uh, multiple position changes and new officer hiring due to retirements. Um, this piece right here um, a lot of agencies are looking for officers, and we were very lucky and blessed to have the folks that we got. Um, and we did that through without adding hiring bonuses, we did that through off without offering money to people. We got those good officers because of the quality people that we have. The officers that we have now were probably our best advertisement. So just uh, working for a good city and um, working with a good bunch of people is how we got those good folks. 
uh, the addition of body and vehicle cameras. That's historical for us. Obviously, we haven't had those in the past. So it's huge for us to, to keep continuing transitioning through that. Um, ever since we've had those, uh, the benefits have definitely outweighed the negatives, um, whether it's through different complaints, whether it's through training opportunities, um, and just teaching all the new officers that have come on, uh, it's become a great training tool for them to not only experience how they go through the process um, with their FTOs comments, but then to be able to go back and watch themselves on video and to see what they can do as far as changing. So that was big there as well. <clears throat> Successfully established the police citizen advisory board. Um, we, we started that in 21. Um, we've had multiple meetings. We now are quarterly meetings. There's five citizens on that board. Um, we, every time we meet, we have great conversation. Um, we're working on progressing into how we establish um, bridging more community members with our conversations. So we're establishing our last meeting was last week, and that was our main topic on that. Uh, coming to an agreement with the Yelm Community Schools to have three school resource officers. We've talked about this in the past in length. Um, that's obviously the benefits of that. That's huge going forward with strengthening our relationship with the schools and uh, that trust building with our youth and community. Uh, exceeding all training requirements from Washington State Criminal Justice Training Commission. Uh, we require every officer 24 hours a year. We've met that and it exceeded that. Okay, goals for our training department for our upcoming 2023 and 2024 is to provide training for core staff and officers for a better understanding of our court and police work. And what I mean by that is uh, we work together, right? But many times our officers, they just know that they write a citation, they file it with the court, and then, and then we address it. But I think that it would be great for uh, all the core staff and police officers, including our prosecution, to meet up together and uh, discuss, okay, so <clears throat> any concerns that they may have or what happens to their citations, they need to know, you know, maybe what is judge doing, how is uh, the prosecutor addressing it. And it's kind of like the live of the citation from the time they uh, send it through sector to the court up until the time we close it. So I think that's important. I don't think we've ever done that. So, um, and it will be another opportunity for them to have the prosecutor in front of them to discuss other concerns, issues, or questions they may have regarding their cases. So that's what that is about. Um, another goal is uh, to add more jail bit to our current contract with this quality trial, uh, trial jail. We are not changing anything on the current contract. It does expire uh, in 2024. But we've had conversations with the tribe, and the contract will not change. We will keep the same jail beds, but we will uh, ask for an increase in budget. That's one of my requests. Um, I think we'll discuss it right now in a little bit. But um, for the availability, availability for us to have that uh, opportunity to house more inmates. Uh, another goal is to add more probation services. Um, hours to the probation services position right now. We have to continue and increase recidivism in our court and help with that case load growth as we're going to start getting more officers on the road. We're going to start seeing more citations in our court. So obviously that case load is going to grow. Um, and complete implementation of paperless court process. So I did discuss briefly with our uh, public safety committee meeting. Uh, today that I have started the process of um, becoming a paperless court. Currently, only municipal court in Thurston County has that already in our area, and so we're kind of following their process with the help of IT. We already have the software, Laserfish, which is great because we don't have to spend more money for a software. We just have to work together in creating files and start scanning those files into um, Electronic paper, and then we don't have that electronic paper electronically. And we don't, we can get rid of our files, our cabinets. And so that will take some time, but um, we have started that process, and I can't wait to complete that. Um, purchase and implement the QA portal for public records requests. This is something that, together with Rob, um, 
uh, we have been discussing and adding, especially for public record requirements when it comes to uh, all those case reports, especially now with the camera and the videos. Uh, this is a very uh, a way for us to efficiently provide those records to people. And so we're excited for that as well. We signed the 2324 goals, um, obviously adding additional commission personnel to keep up the population, housing, and business growth. And again, we, we're going to continue with that path of finding quality individuals to fill those positions. Um, developing a training program to help advance the education of the uh, less experienced police uh, officers that we're going to be getting. And I think we're already seeing that a little bit uh, just with the folks that we've taken at this point. Um, at that training program is going to be huge going forward to make sure that we continue that training and advance that just to make that uh, less experienced officer get that education that they need. And I would imagine we're also going to be receiving more legislative changes. So it's going to be something very important for us to continue with that. Um, fill the special unit sergeant position, uh, which will assist the detective duties as well as bring first line supervision to the specialty division. Our specialty division consists of our detective. Um, crime prevention officer and school resource officers. Uh, right now, we currently, the assistant chief is, once that position is filled, is taking that first line supervision position away uh, due to not having a, a, a special unit sergeant. Um, and right now, we don't have an assistant chief position, so I'm doing those duties. So I think that it's important as we grow with the school resource officers. Get that detective position, we work on the crime prevention position. It's going to be important to have that supervisor monitoring them and making sure they have that first line support. Uh, the addition of non lethal options to adhere to new national standards and changes. Um, we've already looked into and have purchased the FN 303s, which basically is a, a gas and, and beanbag launcher that. that came after the legislative changes in July in regards to the, the 50 caliber shotgun, re reducing that, taking that off. They've changed that since then, but I think this was a more effective tool. We also have other tools out there we're looking at is uh, bolo wraps, um, which I think has its purpose in certain situations. Um, and I think another thing I was looking at as far as non-lethal options is how we do our defensive tactics. Um, we're going to go into the jujitsu mindset. Uh, the Gracies have developed a law enforcement format of jujitsu, and there's other agencies throughout the country that have adopted this, and it's reduced officer injuries as well as suspect injuries. So I, I place that in that less lethal, non lethal option as well, because I think it's just going to reduce situations and take care of situations that may advance into something a little more serious. Uh, expand the community resource program to meet the needs of our own community. That community resource uh, position we had in the past and we found to be super beneficial because it bridges that gap. And as we grow with um, not only the neighborhoods, but also the businesses, having those people in place, our school resource officers, when they're not in school, they'll play that role for us. Um, but eventually, I would like to get an individual that that's their primary function is that community resource position. Um, reduce criminal activity and meet the expectations of our citizens. Basically, we want to hold uh, folks accountable um, for the things that they do. And I think working in conjunction with the courts, I think that's something we do hand in hand um, with, with holding folks accountable. So I think that's um, obviously an ongoing goal that we'll continue to have. <clears throat> Yes, on on this uh, jujitsu, are you talking about like hand to hand combat? Yes. So uh, traditionally, we, we all need that training. What's that? We should all have that training. That's true. <laughs> um, it, there's really, I mean, if you look into it and you look at studies of it, it, it definitely shows that it's it's more effective, um, it's less aggressive, and it's more efficient. And that's how come it reduces injury uh, because of those those techniques that they use. So I think that it's just going to create uh, I think just more of a form of a less important option for us. Hmm. Unless someone's coming at you with a weapon. Yeah, that would be the transition <laughs> into something else. But yeah, and, yeah, and ballistic shields as well. I forgot to make that point. Ballistic shields, 
Um, you know, in the new uh, legislation, they want us to control tactics to create time and distance before they would teach for us to go in and, and handle the situation um, dynamically and aggressively. We're backing from that technique and we're going more where we can stand back and, and with, with cover and distance to have that communication with, with the individuals we're dealing with so we can have that ability to de-escalate. I think those okay. ballistic shields will also help in that situation. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, all right, so budget requests. My two primary requests uh, for this new budget, planning and budget, would be um, to expand the probation services, obviously, so that way we can continue to increase uh, recidivism. Um, currently, we um, have a 20 hours per month contract. So I was requesting that we increase it to 160 hours. As we're also preparing for city growth and more officers and caseload and, and stuff. And so um, the city is proposing that um, we increase the contract to 40 to 60 hours per month from the current 20 that we currently have uh, for the 2023 budget year, and then the remaining hours in 2024 and caseload supports it. So, you know, just starting um, with 40 to 60 hours and then kind of um, see how it we're doing and see if we need to increase it to a complete full-time position for the year 2024 and uh, increase jail budget to allow for additional jail beds. Um, we currently have three jail beds in our contract and again this is not changing the contract it's just keeping it but we will have that ability to increase or, or house more. <clears throat> right. So on the police side um, my budget requests uh, for, for, for five patrol officers to account for the expected growth of the city and um, to add an additional team member in 24 to the Thurston County Regional SWAT team, bringing our contribution to that team as two members. We currently have one. Um, I think it's important that we add to that team because the training um, that these folks get while being on the SWAT team is something that they can bring back to us. Um, it, it helps us on patrol to establish threat assessments on certain calls. It also brings us training to our firearms training. Our firearms training isn't just always standing on the line shooting guns and removing, and it's very dynamic training. And I think that the, the education that these folks get um, with the SWAT team, they bring that education to us and it makes us more tactically sound. So I think that that was important. And it kind of, it, with our negotiation team members as well, they bring, I think it's important for us to spread our, our um, I guess our footprint in the county with other agencies and sit, have it a, just another seat at the table with another agency to get us out there. Uh, the city is proposing that we have three officers to be hired, two for the budget year of 2023, one for the 24 budget year um, to fulfill the school resource officers request. And also they're proposing um, to add that second SWAT team position um, in the 24 budget year. Sure, I have a question uh, for that one, for the 2024, that's a school resource officer uh, in addition? Yeah, the three positions that are being proposed by the city would be, it's reference to that commitment that the schools are providing for us. So that money that they would be providing for us would be part of for those positions. And that comes out of the, the school fund and that Correct. Uh, there, there is part of the school. Part of the okay. Most of that's paid for by the school. I mean, for a full yeah. officer annually, it's now how, how much chief? So right now, um, just their salary for the 22 union contract is 74,000 and some change. Um, obviously that goes up every year and in every scale they go up. Not to mention equipment. Equipment, you've got, you've got uh, you know, all the benefits. Um, and with an officer, obviously you get it, have to have a car. Have to have that equipment and it goes up from there. Um, but for their salary, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So in 2024, we plan to have at least three school resource officers, you think? Correct. That'd be great. By next September, in school year, starting next September, my goal is to have three. That's fantastic. You said it's about probably somewhere in the ballpark of 120, 130. 
for what our total cost for officer. Um, after the initial year, it's I estimated about 119, but I'm not a mathematician, but that's what I figured out. Something like that. Pretty active. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a very random number. <laughs> 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 Listen, I don't care if you calculate. <laughs> so it's the, the school resource, you're looking at probably around probably like 50,000 per that is going to cost the city. But the city has access to them outside of the school. Correct. Control. Yeah, and, and technically we, they have access. We have access to them during the school year. So yeah, it's significant. Happens. But like during during the school year, they're mainly at the schools. Correct. Unless something crazy happens. Correct. My question is for you. The community resource officer and the school resource officer, how do those positions differ? So the school resource officer main function is to establish that relationship with the school and their function is in the school. They, they take care of issues within the school. They also um, teach classes in the schools, um, hours trainings, different kind of harassment trainings, things like that. The community resource officer works with the, the businesses and the neighborhoods and has those interactions and communication and conversations to listen to what they need and then they bring that back to us and then we try to just work together to bridge that gap so um, they also help um, code enforcement as well periodically so there's different different functions for them but the schools are school resource officers school function community resource officer basically is thank you Brian. Okay. i do have a follow-up question yes, and that is um is that hiring separate than the three that you asked for, or will they be taking on both positions? So until we get established community resource officer, is that what you're talking about for that position? Yes. Are you envisioning a separate hire for the community? Correct. Resource? Down the road, uh, that position would be filled with their primary function being community resource. Um, right now, I use the school resource officers to do that when they're not in the schools to help out with that program. Right, and then that is, just to be clear, separate than you're asked for the three resource officers to be hired. It will be, yeah. Okay, thank so. you. Chief, as we discussed in the uh, committee meeting, uh, with those five new officers that you're putting in request for, uh, and just so the other council members can know what I recommended to you is uh, trying to reach out and find the grants. Because as I've said before, I believe that if we can get the grants to get their equipment, then for by 2023, if during that time frame you get their equipment, as you said, it would take a year before it could actually all show up, that by 2024, I'm sure that we as a council could find in the budget a way to be able to bring on five new officers um, with city growth and to prepare for future city growth as well. Uh, so please, as I said, um, if we can do that, I think that'd be a really good idea to help out and that gets us from here. That's definitely something that we can do for sure. Are we talking five officers in addition to the three? No, it's five. So it's my proposal was five cities proposing three, which is great. That's awesome. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Is that you? Yeah. Oh, Chief Executive. Chief, Chief Executive. <laughs> I'll make this brief. We'll be a few more tonight after me. And the Executive Department is. Uh, pretty simple when it comes to that. So, you did that. Uh, what? You did that. <laughs> Are you a bit chilly? What? Are you a bit chilly? I am. Yeah, I'm a little bit chilly. It's a big you want my coat? It's a big coat. Yeah. It's pretty thin. Pretty thin. Do some Yeah, you want my coat. So, the executive department right now, um, Obviously, Lynn just joined the department or the city. She's under the executive department. We have IT under the executive department. We have HR under the executive department. And obviously, Joe and I. Um, so that's basically encompasses the executive department right now. Um, 
until we look at re reorganizing a little bit as we go forward. Um, as you know, when Lori uh, left, she was the administrative services director. And so when Lori was here, the IT department was under uh, the administrative services department, but we don't have that position right now. So uh, when Lori left, we, uh, IT uh, went under executive. So it's just a change uh, when Lori left. So we'll go to the first slide, um, get through the uh, accomplishments. So um, I wasn't obviously in this position through all of 21, so I can't take uh, you know, credit for everything that's up here. Uh, I'd like to, but I can't. Uh, so the, obviously the COVID was a big thing for the city. Uh, and obviously I was with the city during that time frame, and uh, it was extremely challenging to navigate and operate um, through that. Uh, but we made, uh, we come out, I think, uh, on the positive side of that. Uh, obviously the transition to a new, new administration. Uh, and when I say with that, uh, our council was predominantly new as well. So it was a, in, in my 25 years with the city, I don't think I've ever seen that much of a transition in administration in a year's time. Um, obviously some challenges, some concerns, fears, <laughs> for lack of better words, but uh, I think we got a great team and, and uh, a great administration right now, great council to work with. Obviously the balanced budget, successful audit for Stephanie over there in the corner. More accolades for her for keeping us uh, going the right way. Water rights, had to put water rights on there, obviously, you know, that goes back 20 plus years uh, for the folks that got us to this point where we got our water rights. But that was huge for us. The transportation package uh, with the three roundabouts that will start next year um, is going to be a, a huge deal for our city uh, in improving the traffic flow uh, in and out of town, especially with the slight delay in the uh, bypass or the alternative route. Uh, the three roundabouts are going to um, help kind of bridge that gap until we can get that done. Restructure and relocated employees departments. Uh, obviously, you know, Cody's department is a huge department. He had a huge building down there. Uh, much of that building was unused. It is now used. Um, and so uh, we, we did that. The, from HR, I talked to Karen earlier. She submitted some uh, accomplishments. 34 employees were hired in the last two years. Uh, not new employees, just 34 employees total, uh, which is which is incredible. Some were new, some were because of retired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Various reasons, but basically 34 were were brought on uh, to the city, uh, which is a, a tremendous amount of work and opportunity. And it, it just continues. Um, even this week, we have several more uh, job offers out there, folks that are going to be joining us uh, soon. So, uh, and then of course the communication rep coordinator position that Lynn is in uh, starting today. This first day. Uh, so we're really excited about this position. The mayor and I spent a lot of time uh, kind of putting this together and, and kind of what we hope to get out of it and what we think it could uh, provide to the city. Uh, some great advantages. And so we're super, super excited to have Lynn join us and kind of carry that vision forward on what that position could be. Uh, three labor relations contracts. That's, I don't think it's ever been done in, in one year that we did all three. Uh, within like a what three four month window, um, I never want to do it again, but <laughs> I'm sure we will. But anyway, that was a big deal, and I will just say, just as a, some accolades to the council, um, in all the time I've been here, getting the council behind and supporting uh, some of the numbers and the and the doc and the and the wording uh, was really big for us. And so, from a department head standpoint, working with uh, councils in the past. It hasn't always been that supportive of, of what we wanted to put on the table. And so that's a big accolade to the group that's in here. And then just the uh, morale and workplace environment, uh, that was one of, one of the uh, you know, top priorities for Joe and I. When we, when we came in, we talked well before the year started. We said, we got to change that culture. We got to change the culture here. And so hopefully uh, we've done that. We've continued to, to try to do that. And uh, hopefully it's a, it's a good place to work. And then um, exempt employee contracts, that shouldn't be in there. Or no, it is, I'm sorry, we're, we're, we're finishing that. Personnel policy revision, our personnel policy really hasn't been updated in like 20 years overall. And so uh, in the next month or so, we'll have a brand new revised personnel policy that will uh, be available and guide us. And then achieve the well city status and receive a 2% medical premium discount for uh, 2021. Um, and that was from Darren as well. Move on to the, the goals. Grow responsibly, staff appropriately, improve every day, customer service, 
uh, improve cleanliness and appearance of Yelm, maintain healthy budget, uh, continue to focus on making Yelm a great place to live and work, invest in our employees, and that kind of goes with the one below that, the development and implement management training program, um, and then restructure to improve the efficiencies and accountability. As I said, we're looking at how we're going to restructure uh, our, our whole city as a whole to improve that. Um, but, the, but the big one I did for us, um, and it, you, you'll hear it reiterated a little bit uh, more as we go, is this implement management training program. So right now, when we come from the police department, for example, when Rob became the chief, when I became the chief, uh, the state requires certain classes to be taken. Certain certificates have to be obtained within a short time period um, in order to maintain that position. Other departments in the, in the, in the city or county, they don't have those requirements for any managers, any supervisors. Um, if they go to training, they can go, they don't have to go. What we want to do as a city is develop this management this training program for our supervisors that allow everybody to um, basically get better at what we do, right? To keep perfecting what we do, become better managers. Um, even if you've been a manager for 20 years, you know, you're hiring a different generation today than you did, you know, 10 years ago. And so uh, the whole goal is here is if we can invest that uh, time in training into our managers, it'll trickle down into our departments and we'll have better departments for it. And so um, that was, that's, that's our focus for us going into that. And then I, we don't have, I don't have a big budget. Um, I had a big budget when I was police chief. Uh, <laughs> now I don't really have a budget. And so it uh, makes it easy when you're doing budget time. Uh, so basically if you go to the, uh, the next slide, all it is is the, the training one. And then we just threw the reader board up there because there was some conversation about the reader board at the old city hall. Obviously it was stagnant for a long time because we didn't really have anybody that to change it, uh, changing it became very difficult because you physically had to go into that building, log into a old computer and get it to change. Uh, and then it just quit working all together. And for a period of time, I think it had one message on there that was about eight, nine months old, because I think it was advertising a football game, but football season had been over by about six months. And so I think we just shut it off because we couldn't get it fixed. And so with the new communications position, we thought it, it uh, and the new technology that allows you to remotely uh, program messages and program messages ahead of time. Um, and again, using Lynn's position, we thought it could be beneficial to advertise what the city's doing, where the meetings are being held, and just you know, ongoing, uh, you know, not, not something that is stagnant, but, but to keep it very current. So we wanted to just throw that allocation in there. And, and um, you know, as far as where it goes or what it looks like at the end of the day, you know, we don't have that type of specific, but. We just wanted to try to pencil something in in case council decided that that was something you wanted to support and add into the budget. So, any questions for me? Yes. Do we do the dog park in twenty one, or was that before? Okay, I'm losing track of time. Dog so, park's not. It's not. It'll be no, no, but we initiate like purchase the acquire yeah. the property. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, you want me to do that? Wait, he's gonna, he'll, yeah, he'll, oh, get, yeah, he'll, he'll do his deal. Yeah. 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 Yes. I have a question. And I probably should know this, but I don't. Um, how many current city employees do we have? 68. Wait, we just talked about this in story. I think it's, it's going to be closer to 70, 71 um, after everyone's on board. You're off, but well, no. You don't know what I'm <laughs> I talked to Carrie earlier today about it. But I, I didn't know you were going to ask that. That's a great, great question, though. Way to give me a question that I really can't fully answer. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. But it was 68. <laughs> it was 68. <laughs> See? Any other questions for me before we move to the next department? Some of your questions may be answered as we go through the other departments as well. So if not, come back to me and I'll answer. Did you want me to tag that stuff on? Yes, you know what? Jason's here, and I, I, it was my fault. I went to Jason late, and I said, Jason, give me some accomplishments, and, and he was busy today, and I couldn't get him on here. So Jason's here, and I just asked him if he could give a couple updates for us. So we had some yeah. later. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Fair enough. <laughs> So we had some pretty major accomplishments this year. Uh, we were able to finish a fiber optics co a connection in between. Jason, introduce yourself to you. Jason Hardy, IT manager for the city of Yelm. Good evening, council um, and mayor. Um, I just wanted to update you on a few things we did in the last couple of years. 
few of the many, I should say, but uh, the big one was we were able to finish a fiber optics connection that's over two miles in between public safety building and public works. It'll save the city over $900 a month and it should last over 20 years for growth. So it was a big accomplishment for us. We've been working on that for almost 10 years, trying to get permits and approvals and a pathway to get this cable all the way there. It was a great, huge accomplishment. Um, another really big accomplishment to pick back on Rob is Aaron, our uh, network administrator. Awesome, awesome dude. Was working really hard with Rob to get that pushed out. Lots of hard work and just getting one of the best body cam security footage companies in the entire nation to come out here. So that was an awesome one. Um, lots of digital form work. So we've been uh, going on with Sonia, transforming the city from paper to digital. That's been something we've been working on years and we're really getting to the point where there's very few amounts of paper that we have to push through the city now. It's almost all digital. People can do it from anywhere they need to. Um, and the last one is uh, we're working on a new security onion server, which just finished up deploying. It gives us full visibility of our network to ensure that there's no Russians or Chinese coming in and trying to hack us. And it'll warn us if they detect anything and uh, it allows us to segment our network so that even if a piece of it gets somehow compromised, they only get this small little piece instead of the whole pie. And it will really, really increase the security of our city going forward and it's, you know, more relevant today than ever with the things going on around the world. So. Um, those are our big accomplishments in 21, 2022. So how fast do you get to catch? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's another reason why security is so important because we wouldn't want someone to be able to put some other random offensive or other type of message out on some country board. And that is something that would be vulnerable to that if we didn't have this type of security in place. So it's a it's a big deal because that's public and people are driving by it and it would be really important that that happened. And then uh, just real quickly to add on to uh, our, our goals moving forward in 2023 and 2024, um, we're going to be there supporting our court, our police, and all of our other departments as they grow. We uh, absorb a lot of that growth in terms of management and overhead. Um, every single new staff member is more management and overhead for us to take over and make sure that their accounts are working, make sure their computers are working. It's just cost and flippance of those just keep growing over time. And uh, the last piece was for looking at the budgets and stuff going forward. Uh, as far as I know, as of right now, we don't have any real big asks in the next biennium. We're going to try our best to uh, basically get our budget, our ENR fund that is uh, supplied money through uh, all the different departments to get that really just trim, light, and as you know as efficient as possible. Because as everyone knows, a lot of people look at IT and they say, "Where's that money going?" And we want to be able to say, "This is exactly where it's going and why it's going." There. That's it. You guys have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> service and utility building, so now we're the financial services department or department of six. Um, we hired an accounting assistant to focus on accounts payable and front counter um, coverage. So mainly doing accounts payable, but she does cover the front counter when our front counter staff has vacation or sick or things like that. Um, we did receive a clean audit report for fiscal year 2021. When I came here about a year and a half ago, the city was behind um, on their audit three years, 19, 20, and 21. We are now caught up on the financial side. Um, the auditors just started the accountability side for 2021, um, and that's only gonna be about two weeks. So we are caught up with the state pretty much on our audits, which is a big thing. Um, we've been working really hard to clean up our general ledger accounts, ensuring that all of our transactions are properly coded in accordance with state guidelines. The Washington State Auditor's Office, they tell us how we're going to code everything. They give us a chart of accounts. Um, and we've just been going through and making sure everything is coded correctly, making sure that, um, you know, if a transaction is miscoded, we put it where it's supposed to go. Um, and that just helps us run reports to tell, you know, everybody, all of our stakeholders, this is how we're spending our money and this is what it's going to be. So I'm really proud of my staff for um, jumping on board and really working to get that all cleaned up. 
Um, with Jason's help, um, our BNO tax process, we have electronic payment options now. Our forms are all electronic. I work. Good job, buddy. All right. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption for those that were watching live. There's probably about 400 or so. Sorry about that, folks. Um, this will, we did take a 10 minute intermission when we had uh, technical, technical difficulties. Um, nothing was discussed. We will start the meeting back up and right now. All right. Can you wait? Uh, Stephanie. All right, um, let's see. So, um, there we go. So our BNO taxes since 2022, 2020, we've increased our collection by 35%. Um, I picked off a six series finance boot camp that is just a, a basic um, training series on the structure of the city, how we do our accounting, how we do our expenditure reporting revenue reporting. Um, I did the budget session with council, if you remember, I did that a while back. And so um, that's ongoing. And then I did have staff attend continuing education trainings um, during this biennium. Next slide, please. So 23-24, um, we are just about to issue a new updated purchasing policy. Um, that is in accordance with all the guidelines and RCWs with um, purchasing and bidding and small works and that sort of thing. We're going to update our travel policy. We're going to issue a capital and theft sensitive asset policy. And then we're working on our collections process for both utility and legal. Um, we are going to start researching financial software and set up some demos to see. Um, so we belong to the software we have is called Bias. It belongs to a company called Springbrook. And their next step up, we're going to watch some demos on that. Um, the problem with our current Bias software is that it doesn't, the modules don't necessarily talk very well between modules. So there's oftentimes there's hiccups like between permitting and cash receiving or accounts payable. And so we're looking for something that will serve all of our needs and make for a smoother transition across all the different modules. Um, we are going to issue a banking services RFP. Um, we are working on cross-training our staff so that we have people cross-trained in all functions of finance, um, especially payroll, financial reporting, and budget preparation. And then we'll continue to do our finance boot camp sessions in 2023 and 2024. I'm kind of doing the first round with city hall staff, and then I'll kind of open it up to other departments and council members are always welcome to attend those sessions. Um, so I have two requests in 23 and 24. The first one is that I wanted to um, add a BNO tax analyst position that focuses on business license and BNO tax. Um, we are probably going to peak 1 million in BNO tax revenue this year. And um, it will more than certainly cover the um, staff increase of about $8,000. We would, we have an accounting assistant position. We would leave that vacant if we created the BNO tax analyst position. Um, we've developed in house knowledge on, on the tax laws, and we want to retain the talent that we have and that we've developed. And so my thought is to um, move the person that's currently doing BNO taxes. To move them into that tax analyst position, leave the accounting assistant position vacant. So I'm not adding an FTE, I'm just doing a promotion of it. Yes. What's the difference then? About eight thousand dollars. No, I mean not money wise, but <laughs> what they're actually doing between so the accounting assistant that's currently doing BO, she's also doing accounts payable um, and some other functions. And so her her main job now would be just to focus on BNO and developing that program even further for us. Um, and then my part time person that I hired this year would take over all of the accounts payable. So. Um, and then I did request $50,000. It's an approximate number. Um, if you are familiar with City Hall, there's two private offices one is for the city administrator, one is for human resources. 
Um, I would personally like to have a private office and I know the city clerk would also. Um, we have had some estimates. We think it'd be about $50,000. Um, it's really difficult for me. I manage a staff of five to have a confidential conversation with anybody in my office. I basically have to go outside or go into the conference room if it's not busy. The same with Kathy. Um, it's just really difficult to be a director and be in charge of staff and not have a space to have those confidential conversations, not only with staff, but with the management team and other people. So that is my two requests for 23 and 24. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Tony talks fast. Let's put on your hat. We've got two presentations. We'll start with the Public Services Department budget presentation. Okay. All right. Um, so we, I'm trying to focus high level on the accomplishments, not because we have any more accomplishments in the department, but we're very task oriented and specific things we're in it. So when something gets constructed, built, that's something we accomplish. So I try to cover just kind of some of the basic ones. Um, so Cochrane Park phase one upgrade, the whole front half of Cochrane Park was rebuilt in 2021. Um, and then the main, the coolest thing is it's an aesthetic, right? But the main purpose of that was to allow increased flows to Cochrane Park. And the reason we want to increase flows is because we're making more sewer water, reclaimed water now that we need to treat and send somewhere. So instead of sending it to the river and getting no benefit from it, now our Cochrane Park can take those new upgrades. Um, the outdoor fitness court um, right over here was something we did along with new sidewalks installed in City Park, along with the community garden that was installed. I didn't want to take credit for the community garden because it was a group of individuals outside of the city that kind of organized that. We just gave them the place to do it. So kudos go to them for that. But we did build the sidewalks that go to that park and we were able to build a fitness court and kind of almost complete city parks. That was a pretty good accomplishment for us. Um, one of the biggest ones that just happened is we are now hauling and pumping our own septage and WAS is waste activated sludge. So before we are paying uh, two companies, Blowhawks and Drain Pros to do that, um, it's cost us on average 500 to to $1,000 every trip. Now we do it and it costs us around $500 a month in fuel and that's it, which is huge. And that was partially um, to council adding that collections crew members. So we have a collections guy who's just out there pumping tanks all the time. He's had a really good interaction. I think one of the benefits that I didn't foresee, which has been huge, is that he's having interactions with the public on a daily basis from our sewer department. They can ask questions, get information from them, and it's just been a really good benefit. Now people are learning more about our sewer system and how it works, which has been awesome. So that was just a huge bonus. Um, as uh, Administrator Stansel said, we had new offices constructed for planning and building. So if you haven't been to, I think all of you have at some point. Um, upstairs, we had an old storage closet where it was all of the files for the city. We moved those out and built five offices and then one more office down the hall to house our entire planning and building department. We were able to move them out of City Hall, free up space in City Hall, and kind of get all of the public services under one roof, which has been really helpful. Um, Mazlin Avenue extension is finished and open. So if you haven't been on there, Mazlin Avenue, that was an eight year, it sounds crazy, eight year project because we had to obtain right away. Um, that It's surprising how long roads take because you have to go through all these hoops. So as you'll see when we come to our other goals, I'll tell you kind of what else we're doing. But Mazlin Avenue is finished, great road has been beneficial to me. Specifically, wasn't even planned that way. That's what I built it. Yeah, I, I planned it before I even got here. That's how good it was. But it, it's been a great moon. And it's um these kind of things are what's helpful in lowering our in, in our inside traffic. The Yelm traffic itself is putting these like side roads in to allow public people in Yelm to go through. Um, park, parking lots at public works and city park were paid. So one of the big things I really really wanted to stress is that if we're gonna force people to do something, we shouldn't just tell them to do it. We should also do it ourselves. And one of those was get ourselves up to code. Um, two of the things that were lacking was public works had a um, gravel parking lot coming in. If you have, if you remember that from a couple of years ago, and the city park had a gravel parking lot. It's hard to tell someone, hey, you need to pave your lot. They go, why isn't our paved? Even though we we're existing non-conforming use, it didn't sit well with me, and I know it probably didn't sit well with you guys. So it was great that our team was able to go out there and get paved, and you guys allocated the money for that. So huge thank you to you guys. Um, there's a community garden I've mentioned already. New asset management software. One of the big things coming in um, was kind of tracking our assets, tracking what we're doing and the work we're doing. Um, getting a new asset management software with the help of IT and kind of vetting it. We started to do solutions now brightly. 
It's, it's the same software, it just changed its name because they were getting feedback from Dude. People didn't like that phrase for some reason. Um, so they're now Brightly software, and that tracks all of our systems. So whenever any developer comes into town, they want to know what the water lines are, sewer line step tanks, we can pull up on this asset management software. We can send them feedback on last time the step tank was pumped, what pipes go next to them, when those pipes were installed, how big they were, and it's just an amazing tracking tool that my whole team uses, the water guys especially. So um, we obtained over four million in grant funding. So right now, um, our team mostly planning the building and uh, Pat Hughes, our project manager, have been utilizing this grant funding. So the HCP have that conservation plan, RCO grant for the trail. Um, Mosman Avenue was almost completely paid for in grant money. The dog park that we're going to be building will be paid for in grant money. Um, it, it's just it's crazy how much grant money brought in. This is money that taxpayers in Yelm haven't had to spend on these projects, but they definitely benefit the city of Yelm. So good for thinking on council to accept these grants. And then our um, the team that we have there is public work to administer them. And then the other one, Mr. Samson mentioned, is obtaining water rights in the 20-year process. Um, this, you know, we were obviously here at the finish line, but it was a lot of work that came in before us that got these here. We just kind of pushed it over the edge, right? They hand us with a ton at the finish line. We ran across and said, yeah, we did it. Um, but it was everyone else that put in the work that got us here. So just really good kudos to all them, but it was just a long process. And now you've seen our growth blow up. One thing I do want to mention that kind of goes with those water rights is that um, we were in a meeting with other cities in the area about how many single family homes they have built in 2022. And Kirkland, if you know where Kirkland, Washington had uh, 72 single family homes. We had 312. So you can see the difference in just our development versus other areas that are bigger than us and why everything we're doing is so important now because we are shaping the future of Yelm and you guys are the council that's there doing it. So just good job on you guys and the water rights there. Um, goals for 23-24. As you know, we start construction of the new WRF um, in December and the idea will be that in 2024, that should be complete. It should be a 24 month project and it will be complete. That'll allow us to um, handle our own septic. Right now we haul our septic to another place. So we always activate a sludge. We do it, but we have to take it somewhere if you can't process it on site. We'll be able to process it on site and get stuff here. It'll also allow us for future growth of the 2045 and beyond. We can just continue adding cassette membranes and bio dryers and this plant can run for the next 40, 50 years. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, upgrade the state of city park. So one big thing that has always been brought up is you know people having to bring stages for events at the park. So we're excited to be able to you know kind of get that going and upgrade that stage. I know public service committee and many other people are working on just the rest of the like what we do with pavilions, what's going on with that. So stay tuned for pavilion information. Um, development process. So there's some things we want to do. We'll probably institute some of these this year, but um, the biggest thing is going through our development process and seeing ways we can improve it and refine it. Um, one thing we'll start doing, and it'll probably start in November of this year, is a what we call development hour or developer hour where anyone can come in to planning and building we'll all, and ask any question they want. So any potential developer can come in, ask questions free of charge, get some information, um, and then that should give people an idea. A lot of people just don't know what to do, right? Like, how do I submit this? How do I start this process? And it's hard sometimes to Google it or whatever search engine you use being. Um, so this way it will give someone a person to talk to to get that information. So we're excited about that. Then yeah, what goes along directly with that is update our design guidelines, our UDC and comp plan. So UDC is Unified Development Code and our comp plan is Comprehensive Plan. So these two big things, the Comprehensive Plan has to be updated every year, so required by law, but it makes sense to do our Unified Development Code at the same time. So going through our code with a fine tooth comb, making sure that everything makes sense in there, that stuff is still legit, that we don't have, you know, or stitching posts required at every bar. Um, you know, we don't have you know gutter stuff like that that just doesn't make sense. Get it out of there. Get the code completely updated. Our staff does a really good job of doing patchwork fixes, but we're putting you know lipstick on a pig right now. We need to move forward and just update the code fresh. You know, get our Maserati or whatever car you like to test yeah. or whatever. Like that. <laughs> um, so we're excited about that. Um, the next thing is we have to start and complete the final upgrades of Cochrane Park. So we did that front half. We're going to do the back half next, so to increase the capacity of the rest of the park. Um, a couple of things we're going to do while we do that, we're going to build a gazebo out there for a wedding venue. One of the big, um, Cochrane Park, if you just watched Homecoming, um, everyone goes to Cochrane Park to take pictures, to do anything. So putting a gazebo out there for weddings and picture taking, along with upgrading the fountain to be, I call it the Yamagio. Um, so it's, you'd be surpri it's surprisingly cheap to put a couple of cool looking fountains in there. So we're going to have a new, two new fountains in there that'll have light displays and color programming. Um, Lynn will be in charge of what those are. So 
Stay tuned for her and what her ideas are. Are those fountains going to be purple water? Are they what? Purple water? Yes, they'll be reclaimed water. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting all around here. Just so people know. Yeah, they will be reclaimed water. Don't go swimming in the fountains. Um, you shouldn't swim in the fountain anyway. So, we're excited for those upgrades. But more importantly, those upgrades will allow us to increase the capacity to 250,000 gallons um, per day to that park, which right now we're at 50,000 gallons a day. So, huge, huge upgrades. Um, starting to complete construction of a new Southeast Reservoir. So if you know out by Walmart Boulevard, um, if you live out there, the pressure gets kind of low. It's an area of the city that has a lower water pressure because it's the very end of the system. So we're building a new reservoir out there. Um, this council uh, allowed us to kind of start that design work. We had a property purchase and that should start construction next year and finish in late 23-24. We'll add on for, for fire flow and pressure out there, which would be really huge. Um, start complete construction of accurate alleyway and one-way streets. So one of the big things um, we want to do is kind of create this better downtown walking atmosphere. So a public services committee, along with uh, parts advisory committee and some other groups, are working on this accurate alleyway plan. Um, we just got some kind of base design like stuff back that the public services committee will see this month. Um, and that'll create a walking path here and some one-way streets that'll allow better flow of traffic. And during events, we can shut them down and do food truck events or have a carnival or whatever. It'll be really awesome. Um, start complete construction of trail under Squally. So we, as you know, the city applied for grant funding for the RCO. We were ranked fourth, so we will get funding for that. That'll allow us to build a bridge and build a little sub out all the way into Pierce County. So we'll be at a point where then we'll have to work with Pierce County and them aligning their trail to ours. So that, I think the biggest benefit to that, if you know what the STP is, um, is that the bikes will no longer be on the road. They'll be on the trail the entire way through Yelm. So you won't have to ever see bikes on the road again if we get this done in terms of STP. And that's really safe for them, awesome for us. And then if you want to, it's a really cool walking trail. We'll have a cool viewpoint at the end right over the Squally River. Um, and you can sit there, take pictures, whatever. It'll be great. Can we make a motion of that now? Yes. <laughs> hey, that's our, yeah, we're already working on it. You're golden. <laughs> um, and then the other one that, you know, reiterating to what every other um, department has said is maintain responsible growth. We, um, our department is kind of the foreshadow. We have to plan for things accordingly, um, especially with the planning side of things. You have to do things in a way that allows the city to grow, but grows responsibly. And you know, we always hear the one thing about traffic, about water prices, all these things. So that's, we have to continue to manage that. So we don't get into a situation in, you know, five, 10 years where someone's paying for our mistakes now. So we plan that. So in five or 10 years, they're not paying for our mistakes. They're getting rewarded for our mistakes. and can even, you know, lower effect the rates that way. We're excited about that. Um, 23, 24 budget requests. So you, on your budget request, you're gonna see a couple of things. So we have four new employees requested, um, two streets employees. We've talked about this quite a few times. We currently have no streets people. We have one guy who does streets. He does uh, the mechanical work. He also does our right-of-way inspections and our stormwater inspections. So we have one guy that does all that. Obviously he can maintain the streets. So we're adding two streets employees would be really useful. Um, the other one's an inspector. We're required by law now that we've requested 10,000 people to provide a stormwater inspector that comply with an NPDES permit. Um, that's discharge permit that um, level two. Um, we have to have that person on staff. Uh, and then the other one's a city engineer. So every city in the entire United States of America is required to have some kind of PE on staff. PE is a professional engineer. Um, we don't have any person on staff that is required to be a PE. Thankfully, um, Pat Hughes, our project manager, has a PE, which has been very beneficial, but he's not required to have one. So if he left us and we had to hire someone else, we might have difficulty finding someone with a PE. So having a city engineer actually supposed to have a PE would be very helpful, and then we can hire that person in the fall. If we don't have that, we have to have someone on retainer, like a lawyer, which is very, very expensive. Um, the other budget request is a UDC comp plan update. You know, we're required by law. We put money in there for that update. I fully think that we'll be able to get grant funding since it's required plan that you have to do. A lot of times there's grant funding to fund that. So I'm hoping this doesn't cost the city anything. There might be a small match associated with it, as you can see there, mm -hmm. but we sh should be well be under what is required to update the comp plan. And then the one-way couplet stage, um, those are the other two big things we're asking for. We have money in our own streets budget to do the one-way couplets. The idea is we're going to look for grant funding. Ideally, if we can get it, then we can save that money and put it toward a different street. We're also working on some other road projects, but we're not requesting funding because we're going to go full grant funding on those. Um, Roten Road, if you know Roten Road going out to the new dog park, now to the connection where the bypass will be slash alternate route. Um, we want to upgrade that road before the bypass gets built. So we're applying for grant funding to do the design work for that. So 
Which states uh, are you thinking about making one of those? Uh, it's McKenzie and Washington. The two right here. Okay. So this one here and this one here. Yeah. So those are the initial, and it's our downtown quarter vision plan to do that. It makes sense to do it now with all the events happening, and then also turning that alleyway behind City Hall into an activated alleyway. I don't know about activated alleyway. Activated alleyway is walking. So, like, if you go to cities where they have like bistro tables out, they have like people walking, lights hanging over, it's totally just for walking. So, it'll be pedestrian movement only. Okay. So, and then it'll increase the cool news about the turning these into one way is you increase the parking exponentially because now you can turn a whole lane into angled parking. And then you can have another lane of parallel parking for food trucks. And so there will be a lot of upgrades to like the light pull system to allow for 220 plugins for food trucks. Just a lot of forward thinking. Public Service Committee will be seeing the design, like some base designs on that. I got them back yesterday. So we'll be seeing some designs on that this time. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yes. Uh, come from across. Or, yes, sorry. <laughs> My bad. It's I was looking at cross me while I was looking at the other side. Okay. Uh, one of the things I see in there, and I'm sure it's already been paid for and all. I'm just curious on uh, for the next two years, the veteran memorial. Yeah, so, so what is the, it, I, I mean, the plans are out there. We heard that it's going to be moved, that it's going to stay. What's going on with that? Yeah, so we're not asking for any funding for the veteran memorial. There's a lot of grant funding out there. So I'm not putting a budget request in for that because I think we can pay for it completely out of our, out of grant funding. Okay. There's so much funding for that. So that's why it's not in my budget request. But yes, you are right. The plan has been to find a new location that can better serve um, the veteran community, not only as a memorial, but maybe also as some kind of service as well. So we're still working out the kinks, and that's that's we're still working more to come soon. Yes, so what money is required to make a road one way? So then the sign that says go this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're on the same boat I was when I first started. I was like, why do we need money? Yeah. Um, so if you know these two roads, they don't have sidewalks all the way down. They don't have parallel parking all the way down. Um, there's not street lights all the way down. So that the, the road itself is good. You don't have to do anything to the road. Maybe do an overlay of the road. But you have to add sidewalks, buy right away over here, add sidewalks, put sidewalks in across. So it's just like mostly sidewalks, parallel parking, um, putting some paint up, putting some small signs up. Putting some street lights up with the ability to plug into so we can do some of that. That's that's where the most of the money is going to go. I totally agree with you guys. I said the same thing. I was like, put a sign up and stop driving in that direction. Maybe have a cop sit out there for a while. Hey, turn around. So, yeah, so that's the money to pay the police officer to stand out there. Stop driving. Yeah. Where does our septage go when you truck out of here? So, get uh, sick. yeah, so <laughs> ours, so we have two things we have waste activity, sludge, and septage. Waste activated sludge goes to Shelton. So they have a facility in Shelton process as a waste activated sludge. Waste activated sludge is the end product after everything's treated. That's what's left over, the gunk that we can't do anything with. We'll be able, once the WRS done, we can bio dry that, turn that into fertilizer, great news. Um, the septage, so we go to a step tank, we pump it out, um, just like a, you know, your normal step, your uh, septic tank. We pump it out, we drive that to bio recycling in Chehalis. So right down the street is the nearest place we have that we can pump instead of Chehalis and Charlie Bear. So. We pump it up, we go down there and they treat it. Once we have our receiving station online, we'll treat it ourselves. How much will we, uh, I mean, I know it's gonna save us a bunch. We start treating our own stuff, right? Oh, it's, so, so far, here's crazy. We spent 500, roughly thousand last, every year in septage, solids, and for having someone else do it. Um, this year alone, we bought the truck with part of that money and we still haven't spent that buying the truck. So we bought a brand new truck which was 250,000, I don't know what the exact price was. So we bought a brand new truck. I imagine next year, we'll be looking at somewhere in the 50,000 range to do all that. We were paying 500,000 before. It is bonkers. And once our system's online, it's just gonna become, will become a profit. We'll actually make money to sell the ability to dump septage here to other companies. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about a whole spin around, it's great. Um, civilian Hardy. So when, when we move into the membrane plant, Will we still need the truck to pump and will that just stay in Yelman? Yeah, exactly. So, what will happen is we got the truck already, so we can pump our own tanks and everything and just go to our plant and process it. So, it'll be quick trips. We won't even have to drive out of the city anymore. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, with your comment of that, we will be able to charge other companies to dump. Are we talking about like Flowhawk and all those that they have to go out to Lake Lawrence, Clearwood? They don't have to go uh 50 more miles they just stop right here empty their tanks and move them boom and okay. we charge them uh we charge them whatever the going rate is for it. maybe you know whatever well council has to come to decision what that is and then let it down here and we charge them 
Yeah, it'll yeah, exactly. It'll be it's amazing because they, they save so much money on transportation costs and fuel when they can just dump here and go back out to Lake Lawrence and cost. If nobody wants to buy that stuff, what do we do with it? Which the are you talking about the, the residue sludge stuff that we're selling? Yeah, so um the you're talking about bio the biosolids. Yeah. yeah, so biosolids, um the plan initially is to give it away for free. It doesn't cost us anything. Oh, it costs us money to make it, but Giving away for free and using our own parks. So we'll save money. We spend about roughly twenty to thirty thousand in fertilizer per city. We'll use that money for our own parks initially, or that the biosols for our own parks. But then we'll give it to the public for free, local young residents. And then based on the need, we can sell. A lot of other cities we've talked to, they just give it away. Um, but if nobody wants it, then what do you do with it? Uh, then you, you can literally do whatever. At that point, if we can use it ourselves, we have enough need for it to use it all ourselves. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Terry, Tacoma does it, and there's not a worry about lack of demand. Okay. Yeah. The biggest users that we see, so the other places we talk to, are like grass places that grow grass. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I think it's hundred hundred like greens. Farms. Yeah, they they literally go to the one down here over in Olympia that grows that grass. They drive to. Uh, it's yeah. basically the best fertilizer. You yeah, it makes grass grow like crazy. And if people are worried about the other aspects, you know, mm -hmm. grass, it's just grass. So they make grass grow like crazy. They use it and just keep recycling. Mm -hmm. So we will have, there are a dozen people to use it. Come from us. And it's just because uh, earlier this year, you talked about uh, future developments will no longer be doing the sept septic system mm -hmm. when we happen to get the device that's put in there uh, for all within the whole city. Will that, uh, Will we no longer need the uh, truck and that uh, to go out and empty tanks? So when we get to the point, say we're saying we turned everything over in 30 years to grinder pumps, um, there will still be a need for city facilities to have a pump truck. And it's always useful to have a pump truck in case something goes down and we have to take our septage or something somewhere else. Um, so there will always be used for a pump truck. We're talking probably, I would imagine, 30 to 35 years before we have everybody converted to a different system. I just was curious on yeah. that. Yeah. And by then, the, yeah, the truck will probably be done in full, but by then, you'll be floating and stuff around. Train, teleporting. It'll be the future is now. Listen to your judgment. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions about my presentation before we move on to the next topic? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I was I was selected to do the proposed fee adjustments. Um, so you guys get to beat me up, but I'm gonna be talking about several different departments here and what the fee adjustments are in uh, for the people at home. You guys will have it in front of you, but people at home will see it on the screen. Thank you. So what you're seeing, we're gonna do a resolution that'll put every fee into one resolution. The, the one trouble we have as a city, or at least I have, is when we go back and try to find where a fee came from, looking back and you find something from 2015, you find something from 1999, you have to make sure you have the most recent, recent resolution or ordinance that created that fee. So we're going to create, the, we're going to do a fee resolution that's going to put all the fees in one system. While doing that, we want to adjust some of our fees. Some of our fees haven't been touched in 20 plus years. So you'll see that on there. We'll go down these each one by one. Thank goodness they're here. So if there's a specific question about a B that pertains to an apartment, I'll let you ask that question. I'll try to address it if I can. One of the department heads will be able to talk to you about it. Um, so first up is uh, YMC, the B and O, up from 30 to 20. We already charged $30 just in the code. It says 20, so this is just bringing the code in line with what we actually charge. So this is, it's a fee change. It's a NSF fee. Yeah, okay. From 20 to 30. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So this one, this is just a fee. We already charge it. We're just we're officially going to charge it now. That's not what the NSF is down at the bottom. There's another NSF fee that's different. Yeah. So the bank is a number now charging. I shall be the Yeah. There's two. There's, there's yeah, two. there's two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One is for like if you pay for something else versus this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, if you have a question about anyone, we'll stop and do it. Talk about it. Um, home occupation permit, we're lowering the fee to $50. Um, with so it is at $150 right now. The main reason we're dropping it down to $50 is staff time. 
rough, you know, staff has to confirm that the home occupation makes sense where it is. It's within the zone and they have to check the code and regulation if it's excessive waste, what it does, and then they compare it with the business license that was submitted and they make sure those line up. So we're dropping it from 150 to 50 because staff time taking doesn't take enough to warrant, I think, $150. We drop that one down to 50. Um, new account set up. This is for water utility accounts. So right now we charge nothing for someone to set up a new account. Yeah, it takes staff time. It takes energy to do that. So this is recouping some of that staff time with that new account set up. All, I have never found this, well, at least I have. I have found a city that doesn't charge a new account fee when you set up a new account. Um, maybe you know one. So this is just kind of bringing this in line with other people paying for that staff time to set up a new account. Wait, yep. this is for utilities? Utilities. This new account setup fee is a new utility. Well, new what account. if you're setting up for a new person? What do you mean? On your, like, say, rental property that goes from person to person. Is that a new account every time? Yes. Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the account set up in the new person? In the new person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, tamper fee. So, right now, tamper, this is a, so our water. <laughs> um, our, our water systems, when somebody will um, not pay their bill or some other reason they don't have a backflow assembly or they have a leak and they have to shut it off, we close their water system. We turn off the water to their house or their business or whatever it is. Um, we go back out the next day to make sure they're still up. If they turn it back on themselves, we put a lock on it. If that, then sometimes we'll even cut the lock and turn it back on. So this right now we only charge 60 bucks. It's the staff time, the amount, the lock costs to getting them back out there to doing this thing is significant to us and it's having our guys go back out there on a daily to check it. So we wanted to raise the tamper fee up to prevent people or to discourage people from tampering with locked water systems for whatever reason. So is that only applied to when, it, when it's locked? Yes, this tamper fee only applies when someone when it's locked and they cut the lock. Okay. They have to physically cut the lock to do that. If they turn the water back on themselves, we don't we just go back out, shut it off and lock. So good. Okay. Um late fee. Right now we don't charge anything for late fees, um, we it has been it takes work to kind of reattribute these accounts to reach out to these people to call them to you know a lot of people just don't even care if they pay late because there's no penalty involved in it until the water gets shut off. So instituting a five dollar late fee up from the zero that it currently is that's for utility customers paying late fees. We could talk about any of these. Have, yeah, any of these these are all up for talking and debate. So. I'm going to set so if you have questions, stop me. Okay. okay. Um, plumbing permits. So we have two plumbing. The one without commercial is obviously residential. So right now our plumbing permits are at 20 bucks. Um, so when you're installing new piping, new systems, our guys have to come out and physically check it. The, the reason why it's 20 is because it was under their old salary. The salaries have increased by now. It costs us more than $20 to send a guy out there to check your plumbing for an hour. So we're raising that price up to 40 for residential. Commercial takes a lot longer a lot of times. So we're raising that up from 20 to 60. When was that changed, Cody? Uh, the last time, this was changed in 2015. So it wasn't changed. It was just kept the same as what it was in 2005. So this will be the first increase in 2017 years. So you're saying plumbing permit. Mm -hmm. Because then somebody is having a bathroom redesigned, or is it the fact that a house is being built and you're checking most of the time it's the second one. Okay. So when you're building something new and you're putting in the plumbing system, you have to apply for a plumbing permit for that plumbing system. Okay. Yeah. Want to make sure. The same thing applies to the mechanical permit. It's the same exact scenario, 20 to 40, 20 to 60, because same amount of time in there. So that's these two are on there. Is there a reason there's a difference for commercial and uh, non-commercial? Commercial is almost almost always takes well, I need more time for permit. For the permit permit. Yeah, same thing. It often takes more time. There's not a distinguished Distinguishing from anything. So, like in a giant warehouse, you know, if Costco comes in, they file for a plumbing permit, they're going to pay $60. If a small office building, normally you don't get a single office building, but like a strip mall, they apply for a plumbing permit for 60 bucks. Same all around. Yeah, we have to review the plans. We have to look at it, inspect it, make sure it's good, and then approve it. Okay. Um, can I say, way air handlers over 10,000 cubic feet per minute. This is probably nothing to you, but 615. So air exchange units like big exhaust fans on warehouses that pump the air in and out. It's just moving it up 45 cents to kind of make it an even number and kind of calculate for more time to be done. Um, one thing you'll see on here, it's not an actual fee increase, but we have a lot of reviews that are done outside the city. 
where we have to have like our fire, some of our fire inspections have to be done our sprinkler systems. Um, we don't currently charge for the fees that we're paying these consultants for all of them. Some of them we do, but not all. So we want to add consultant costs to all of them. So it just covers us. So say that our civil review engineer left us and now we have a consultant doing that work. We can't charge someone anything besides the $20 we've already paid, had them done, but we can't charge them the consultant cost. So we just want to add consultant costs to all the review fees. So we have that option if we need it. It's not actually increasing the fees, it's just adding that. So if we have a consultant do it, they pay instead of taxpayers paying for a new development in time. Um, zoning verification letter. Right now, we don't have a separate line for this. It's, it's a new fee, but we already charge 125 for it. We just need to create a line saying zoning verification letter. We're getting a lot more of these because of this result. It's a letter that approves the zoning you're in. So if you're like an R6 and you're like, I want to make sure that the zoning is correct. I want to make sure that I can't upgrade. That's what you're asking for. We already charged for it. We just didn't have a line for it specifically. It is 125 that we currently charge. Um, state environmental, environmental, environmental policy or SEPA is uh, something that we have to go through through the state. Um, it costs us more money to send it to the state than we're charging. So we upped it to 400 from 150. Most cities around us are in the 600 to thousand dollar range. So we have to, it's money we have to, our people have to do, submit it to the state, get approval from the state to come back. To so it. what does that usually involve then? When more than a thousand cubic yards of dirt are moved at yeah, projects. I didn't understand so. Yeah. So when the state requires us to submit an environmental report. And so we're just trying to capture that. Um, petition to annex, this is the big one. And I want, I know there's gonna be some gas and auto laws. So when someone's coming to the city, um, we currently charge 350 to circulate a petition. And then once they have it, all the staff work goes into submitting it, we charge 900. We're asking to bump it to 2000. Let me explain why. One is we are by far the lowest. The nearest city that is as close to us is Tomar, and you're 2800. And every other city, Olympia, Lacey is way higher. We're gonna get a lot of annexations. It takes a lot of time. It's a time consuming process. It takes hours and hours and hours to do. And then we also have to submit it to the county. We have to correspond with the county and pay the county for that same reviews. So there's a lot of process that goes into this, and we are both, I mean, literally losing money every time we do an annexation for that. Okay. So just bringing 2000 kind of lined up, still next, below what it was. You mentioned the bigger cities. What about some of the smaller cities like Rainier, Tonino? So uh, Tonino is roughly about 1500, I think it was when we looked at it, 1450, 1500. Um, Rainier, I didn't check Rainier's annexation policy. Thank you. Um, park impact fees. We talked about these a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Tonight, I don't know so we're about the same size. No, we're much larger. It's at 3,600. 3,000. Yeah, so we're five times the size. What? At 2,000, is that about what your estimated cost is when you're running it? I think we're a little low on that, but I think we can we can do that because of how much growth we have. And how much we're getting in. I think we're a little low. I think we're more than 22 to 24 that 2400 dollars range, but I think I think I as a public services director who sees my staff time, I think we can manage some of that and bring it down. So yes. all the ones we just annexed or that were on the books, what is is that the type of thing you're talking about? So yes, yeah, so they've already paid these two, they've already paid this fee and the other fee. So they, they don't have to, it would be a future annexations to come through. The ones that we just did are still under the <laughs> So I just call the city and say, hey, I want to annex my land under the UGA. This, this is what it would cost. No, you, you call the city and go, hey, I'm interested in annexing my land, and I do a petition. You want to circulate a petition first. That's 350 to circulate a petition. Okay. We have to do a public hearing all that for years. Um, this, this also covers the hearing cost because annexation has to go through two hearings. So this covers our hearing examiner cost, all of that as well. Um, our impact fees, we talked briefly about this last year, if you remember. Um, one thing we don't do that I have every other city does is charge a parking fee. So when new development comes to town, they pay into the parks is what every other city does. We don't do that. So when a new development comes to town, you have a 400 homes built. Yeah, they build a small pocket park for them, but they don't put any money towards the parks that we have currently or new parks we're going to build. So they're putting demand on our parks and using our parks, but they're not paying for that usage. So any new parks we build are coming out of our current development, our current people, taxpayers in the city. So this would help fund new park construction. So park impact fees are very specific about what they can be used for. When these park impact fees are assessed on new development, so a new house coming in or a new apartment coming in, we would use this money to build a new park according to our parks plan to accommodate that growth and give these people more 
public space. Yes, Dr. Uh In reference to the single family, multifamily, mobile home, single family, if somebody's, if the developer's coming in, they're going to build 100 single family homes. Mm -hmm. It's 15, 15, 46 per yeah. home. No, yeah, 15, 15, 46 per home. Okay. So 100 homes, you just move that over times by 100. So is that a one time? Yep. Right? Yeah. One time when you build, when you sell your house, doesn't matter. It doesn't. That doesn't change. It's just when you build. So just like a system development charge, but for parks. One thing we, the good news is we have a lot of green money right now, so we're able to do park improvements. But these park improvements we couldn't fund without something like this or a new park. We couldn't build a new dog park without something like this to grant. So this gives us the ability to start planning and building new parks. Well, you get more people in the community, the use the usage is increased. Yeah. You've got to manage something. Exactly. You're hundred, and that this money is very specific. It can only be used for building new parks or maintaining something like upgrading, constructing, fixing something that the parks are currently have. But isn't that new property tax money going into parks that are for parks as well? Read money does. Yeah. So pro, the new property tax money, which you see years down the line as people move in and the property value goes up, goes into the general fund. Read money, um, like when someone sells a house. We get some of that that go to the building fund, which helps the building parts. Very small amount for us. So again, oh, it? No. Oh, uh, no, no, the no. park impact, that's for the developer though, right? That's for a brand new developer. Yeah, someone coming to town building, I'm building a new house right here. Okay, you got it. All right. Yeah. Yes, but at the same time, that's increasing the price of a house by $1,500. We'll pass yeah. it on. There's, and I've heard arguments of, oh, well, they don't always, whatever fee we put on a developer, Directly increase the cost of whatever they're building. And anyone that ever says otherwise, they're lying to themselves. Why are they all different? Why not this the same across the board? Just because we don't charge the same development charges across the board. So we try to keep it like uh, multifamily is normally 0.75 or single family. Um, mobile homes is something that we just wanted to add a section for. We don't really have people coming in. Oh, I built 20 mobile homes. So we wanted to add a section that kind of showed that reflection. Because not each one is going to put us the same demand on house, right? A multifamily apartment. This is per dwelling unit in the apartment, right? So if they have a 40 person apartment and this is times 40. Um, but it's a normal apartment has less people in it than a single family home. That's just the, you know, map. So to James's point, are, are these fees going to be also for like the habitat to, for humanity houses that go up too? Everyone that build new house would be in there. We have for uh, affordable housing, we have waiver forms for different fees that they can get off. But they're saying some things they have to pay for. So there could be a waiver fee associated with this development charge if they're low affordable housing. Yes. I see the park impact fee. What about fees for some of the other infrastructure within the city that they also put a um, impact that they impact, such as our roads, our uh, water reclamation facility, variety of other things? Yeah, the only fees you're seeing are ones we're changing. So there are system development charges like okay. we're talking about. Keeping those the same, we're not okay. recommending any adjustments in us. Okay. Um, so the parking community center, I have been reviewed on here. So we just got a new communications recreation coordinator, if you didn't know. And so I want her to have some time to review and make sure that things make sense to her. Um, we had some things proposed by our previous one. Um, I want her to get a grip on that before we propose those. So we should have these to you at not your next council meeting, but the council meeting at the end of the month. But these, these will be for the parking community center. Um, the biggest thing right now is public service committee kind of saw a Little bit of this, we talked about a park fee. We don't charge anything for any events. I, mean, I know we talked about this, Councilmember Blair as well. People can come in, they can have an event, a for profit event, make a bunch of money, and they don't pay anything for the park. They don't service the park, they don't have any volunteers, they don't even have to have volunteers. And our staff has to be there to do that. So just trying to recruit some of that money somehow. Um, obviously, there'll be exceptions for nonprofits, for community events, stuff like that. Just to push back on that. Yes. I know the, I know the events that I've sold that. Mm -hmm. I've paid quite a bit of money. Oh, I do understand. Yes. So, yes. And one of the things we are trying to do is track all that, you know, tax wise, to make sure that business license in the city because people can just come in, leave, and never say anything again. Um, sign permit is a proposed just from the time it takes to do signs. This is like your big, big, you know, cut off signs that have life behind and everything from 20 to 125. This hasn't been changed since 2005. Um, so, just capturing staff time, reviewing of the plans, going out to the site to inspect the sign. Okay, so that's not for the A-frame signs that somebody puts out. No, A-frame signs you can throw out. Just don't put them in our right away. There's none of no one in here guilty of that. So one thing, 
If you talk to anyone as a business owner, if you put a sign in the sidewalk, we're going to come by and scoop it up because what will happen is a wheelchair will come by and not be able to get by your sign. So make sure your sides are not right in the, the right Just Yeah, put it right next to the sidewalk, not put it in the middle of the sidewalk. We just think of like six today that were right in the dead center of the sidewalk. I was like, come on. I know with the sign code, currently it says, if, unless it's changed, you can't have those at all. Aprons? Yeah. You're allowed to have aprons. So know. yeah, the, um, it's for events, special sales. There's a couple of, I can't remember the exact code. I don't want to pour it off my head, but there is exceptions to that. Can we... And this is probably another discussion. Mm -hmm. Change it up to allow them. Yeah. But make make it where it says yeah. you can't be blocking with the other side. Yes, 100%. So the UD, when we do the UDC comp plan, that'll be one of the things that we'll tackle is yeah. every piece of that development code, the signs, the. Like when we were demos. talking earlier about the sign code, like mm -hmm. obviously we don't want massive billboards that are thousands of lumens bright and you can't see nothing yeah. to block in views, but. Outside of that, I think we do lose it up a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean that, and that's totally whatever council does. We'll do that. Um, Public Services Committee will be the main driver of that, but we'll still bring it to you guys several times in the development code as we go through next year, and you'll get to make those decisions. Like, hey, I don't want that to be that strict. Let's loosen that up. Let's go crazy here. Let's tighten that up. Whatever. So then we do our full code update of next year's. So you guys will be the drivers. Whatever you want to see. Are we requiring a sign permit for an A-frame sign? No, you don't have to do a sign permit for that A-frame sign. Okay. Thank you. We're talking about these are the neon cut out lights behind the signs. Big permanent ones. Yeah. Um, we're mad. Uh, re inspection fee. We talked about this. Right now, we don't charge anything for a re inspection fee. So, this would only be for third inspection, so third and beyond. A lot of times, business will come out because they know they're not going to pay. They go, hey, I think I'm done. You come out and you go, hey, you're not done. You got to do these things. They go, thanks. They try to fix them. You come back out, hey, you, our guys go out three, four, five, six times and they have to keep re inspecting it. We're not charging them anything for that. And so it's wasting staff time and they have used it because they know we're not charging them. Putting out a little chunk on this so they have to pay for it, but we're kind of driving to be a little more honest. Based on project value, is that that can be higher? Yes. Okay. It can be higher. So um, example, like a giant apartment comes in, they have a huge, huge, three huge step tanks and they set them and our guy has to go out and like physically get down there, check the, all the frames, it takes them an hour and a half to do it and they fail. Then they go, hey, the next day they call them again and say, come back out again. And it just keeps happening. So. Hey, Cody. With that reinspection fee, sometimes um, sometimes there's not a, a really a knowledge of, of what there is that needs to be accomplished, and so uh, a lot of times when working with the city, I think there's there's little frustration that people have with uh, not knowing what the expectations are, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure you're doing a better job of that now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's one of those things where when people have to call back because they're just like, I don't know what these guys want. And then a lot of times, as long as there's a clear communication with the city, communicating to people that, hey, this is what we need done, I'm cool with it. But I, 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 I'm sometimes just a little irritated with that one, but I get it. Yeah, and this, and this would be for third and beyond. Right. So the first two are on us. So we'll, we'll look you up two times. And then after that, now I do understand what you're saying is yes. there has been confusion. Um, there have been both sides, right? There have been confusion of people trying to take advantage. Go, oh, I sorry, I said it, didn't realize I had to tell, tell you. It's like, Done the 20 products in the city. Come on, every time you call us, call us. So that yeah, I agree with you on both points on that. So any question about reinspection fees? Okay. Um, copy tape here on the, the police department slash pu uh, public safety department. So copy tape fee $20. You want to say anything about something? So this is for uh so currently all of our court hearings are all um, via Zoom drives on the internet uh, and YouTube. But once in a while, we do get that one person that is just not comfortable with the internet or whatnot, and so they still prefer a court proceeding reporting on a CD or a PDD. And so that's where the fee would apply, where we can uh, trans, uh, transfer that reporting for them into a CD. I don't think charge for that. Yeah, that's, how often does that happen? Not often at all. Oh, um, it's a courtesy, really, right? No. If you want a copy of it, it's our obligation to provide them a copy of it. That's what I mean. Is it currently it definitely doesn't it cost twenty dollars for a play CD and to hit transfer. So it used to happen. Um, these requests would come in um, more often when we were not all um, very full and stuff, uh, and it was mainly to cover like the cost of the DVD CDs and at that time to download it and stuff, but. Again, with our current process, um, sometimes we're 
time, but it's it's always been there. It just hasn't, uh, you know, been in order on the best solution. So this is the VHS ones. <laughs> um, so here's a check return again, same process. If there's a check that bounces to the port system, the bank charges $30, 30 bucks a month you want to charge. Um, credit card, you guys, I wrote credit care, credit card, uh, debit transaction. So this is, you know, you have a fee that when you do a transaction, all business owners know this, and if they set it, they set that fee. So we just follow in whatever that fee is. If we're paying any more than three and a half percent, we need to change the company. Where we Three and a half percent is the higher. Yeah, that's using Square. So as a city, I would assume we're using a more bigger commercial company for their card processing, which should be significantly less. Um, so this fee is not being paid by the city. It's is being uh, it gets charged on the. Oh, I know. Yeah. Um, is that for the court? That's for the court. Yes. That's for. I was just saying in consideration of the people paying with a, a debit card or whatever if whoever we're using is more than three and a half percent we need to look for someone else we can explore that because three and like i said three three and a half percent is about what i pay using square we're looking square it. paypal all of those they're on the high end because you're low low transaction uh frequency so they, they charge a little more like if you're city or whoever and you're processing cards on a regular there should be deals where that processing percentage is a lot and, and yeah. some of these fees so they do go ahead if, and, and thank you Jason, for um reminding me about this but this is helpful so this is with endport endport is integrated also with oport which is the software that we use currently electronically for our forms and so it's part of that as well it covers some of those costs as well so um and I know it looks very high right now. Well, it looks high in the percentage, but most of our people are paying $25 at a time, and the cost is like $100, it's very minimal uh, because it is based on the amount of the payment. Um, many times, uh, Donnie and I are very good about when somebody wants to pay $200 fine by debit or credit card, we try to let them and give them even more time to say, hey, do you want to come back and maybe just bring us cash or a check, kind of avoid those fees. Uh, most of the time, they just want to go and deal with it and they just want to pay. And those are the ones that are paying the highest. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but no, I mean, I, I understand the credit. So. Um, tow hearing fee. This is, I just talked to Tony about this. So when we tow a vehicle, they can have, they can request a hearing. If the police tow a vehicle, you request a hearing. That's the cost to kind of get that hearing going, $73. Um, we already do charge for this, it's just less than correct. Right, yes, yeah. so five would be pretty much to request that um, hearing if they want to dispute the validity of the code. Question If they win that hearing, is that refunded to them? There is a waiver that they can request, and then they, um, I mean, be, beyond a way, like beyond a financial issue waiver, but if they do a tow hearing and they win and it turns out their vehicle was towed wrongfully towed. Do we return that $73 fee? No, because that is a court filing fee. It has nothing to do with the tow itself. So that's separate. I understand that. Um, the perspective of the public is that their tax dollars already pay for the courts. Now, we all know it's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but like me, if I, if I got my, if my car was towed, I went and I know that shouldn't have been towed. Something wrong happened. I go pay the $73, go through court, and it ends up coming out that it's true, your car should not have been towed. Mm -hmm. We should refund that $73 back to that person. I mean, it's something that I can definitely look into, but I don't believe it's a refundable fee, and not just our court, it's not like our court, it's just in general, statewide. But um, I can definitely research that. I'm sure there's no law saying that you have to, but I, I just think we should. If someone's wrongfully towed, and they win that case, I think that we should give them the feedback. That's reasonable. I think we can look into that as well. Okay, we have uh, two, a civil appeal fee and a criminal fee, 230 and 200. These already exist. They're just we're bringing them up to what the filing costs are and anything within ours. Um, passport, this is a fee set by state. We just want to adjust it to what the current fee is and let it flow with whatever the state fee and federal fees are required for this. 
Uh, warrant quash fee, this is something cool I learned about. Um, so if someone comes in, they have a warrant, they can pay extra money to get that warrant quashed or squashed as I like to call it. Yeah. Um, 35 the first time, 70 there, and that lets give them more time to figure out what they need to do with that actual case versus having a warrant out for the rest of that time. Quick question. I have these. Um, so when I was younger, I got tickets all the time, never paid them. That's what that's about, right? Eventually, you don't pay your tickets, you get a that's when you get you basically a bench warrant out. No, you get a bench warrant out when you fail to appear on a criminal citation. Um, you can eventually. Oh, yeah, but I drove with spend license for years and I never paid the tickets. That's why I got this. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's different because if you had, say, a speeding ticket, you didn't pay it. Then criminal licensing has the right to spend your license. If you get pulled over, it, then that's a crime. Yeah. So then, if you fail to appear in your criminal, oh, I have I have no problem talking about my past. I was an idiot when I was young. Yeah. No, <laughs> but no. what this is is so when someone's in that situation, they can come into the court, pay the thirty five dollars to, to squash the warrant, and it gives them time to figure out what they're going to do with the other stuff. So yes. Yeah. So currently. Um, the current process is if you fail to appear your court hearing, you issue you should a warrant, and it stays there until you either get booked uh, in jail or you appear um, in court. But the current process is they have to submit a written request to Judge Meyer, stay in white in this court, and then at that time, then we uh, provide them with a new court date. But the warrant does not go away. The warrant stays yep. until you appear in court because we want to make sure that you're here. So, so this new fee is going to allow them to get rid of the warrant immediately. They can just come to the counter. They're not going to get arrested. They'll pay the $35 if it's their first time. Uh, we will remove the warrant and give them a notice uh, to appear. Um, but again, the warrant goes away at that time. And then they can. That's fair. They can do the second time that it happens on the same end. The second time it will go up to seventy dollars, and then after that, we will no longer take those warrant fees on the counter. They have to either pay cash bail for the actual uh, amount of the warrant, or they can just put themselves in jail. The state does allow us to charge up to hundred dollars, and so Judge Meyer wants to do uh, this sort of arrangement to be as Make your check payable to the city of Yonkers. Oh, I don't know. This is the, the last one is kind of uh, works with our body, the new body cam system we have. So one thing um, that happens is people are going to request video for body cams or whatever happened. The, we have to go through, the staff has to go through and redact the video and take stuff out that can be in there. And it takes time. We don't charge for that. So there can be frivolous people just like, hey, I want body cam. Send it on my way. So keeping, keeping people honest and requesting them they actually want. Um, and it's based on you can see the RCWs here that allow us to do this, and the idea would be 68 cents per minute for body cam footage. So, and this is just to prevent frivolous people from coming and going, hey, give me 40 hours of Officer Bob's, you know, whatever he did. And it's like, oh, we gotta go through all that. So, this prevents that from happening. So, this is taking up a lot of staff time, too, by the way, for, um, to redact every image that's it's necessary on these small body cams. Yeah, so that's one of the big reasons. What would we be redacting? The children faces, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Multiple different things that they're required to redact. You can't have juvenile faces on there. It's hanging on the case. Okay. So you got to go through the software and individually block out faces of individuals that are juveniles. So it takes the software time. So now that staff members there for that whole time trying to redact. I'm just trying. I, I didn't. I don't know the full process of that or why. Yeah, it's, so it's basically, you'd have to have, you have to have someone sit down, go through the entire video, and blur those things yeah. out. Frame by frame. Okay. Yeah. So it takes time. So that could be something that costs people don't just do it to make our staff have enough time to do it. Just a comment. I understand in general what you're talking about staff time. We're talking about staff time mm -hmm. all night long here, and yeah, long and duration absolutely mm -hmm. but i'm still stuck on this home market on the new account setup when you go and open your utilities most people do it online mm -hmm. and if not they walk in and they're told because i did this myself oh just use the little machine right there if you need help let me know so if you're in a, a utility employee and someone comes to do their utilities i mean that is what their job is to do so to me that's not staff time it's not a lengthy thing so i just want to make that comment if it's a huge thing, sure, but staff time within your within your job shouldn't be charged for. Yes, sir. 
I'm, I'm trying to gather from everyone so we can adjust this for our resolution. There's an I'll say that now. Excuse me. Yeah, no, I, was, I, I kind of agree with that as well. I think that is part of your job. Um, you know, first time is free. And then after that, you just pay your bills, right? Because I think beyond that, if they don't pay their bill, and it's it it uh, director guys real fast and then we'll go. So it goes beyond um, when you come in to set up an account mm -hmm. you prepare or fill out online or in person, then we have to do a service order, which then goes over to public works mm -hmm. and you have to sign a meter and the guys have to go out and read the meter to get that your first meter reading, right? And then they go back into that system that goes back to finance instead of the account in our utility billing system. So it's not just it's not just the customer filling out that form, mm -hmm. it's what we do with that information to get that actual account. So they read a meter for the sewer for so water for water. water. Yeah. So it's all right. And it's you know it's it's just something that uh, other cities charge, we've never charged it. Um, it's really council discretion. Okay, thank you. I was going to say, I, I agree with uh, the new account being set up there because of just what she described. It's not just putting your name, address, and boom, you have an account. There's somebody's got to go out, and the reason why they read the meter is so that you have a fresh start, not what the last person left, that there may have been a leak in the house, somebody left something on, and now your first water bill is $1,000 because your place sat, sat it empty for a month. Uh, so, you know, there, there's people involved with that. These are, it, it's a one time fee. Nobody's, it's not hurting anybody. And this is pretty low. $20 to set up your water account. I remember it was 50 bucks for me. And I'll be honest, every time I deployed, if I completely forgot to notify the city to shut my water off, and I'm sitting in the middle of Iraq or Afghanistan, my bills aren't catching up with me, all of a sudden they're shutting my water off. I come back, I'm paying 50 bucks. And you know, there was no waiver or anything else like that. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, we're sorry, we should have told us you were doing this right. Mm -hmm. So $20 to okay. start an account is not that bad. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Um, I think it's fine. Okay, thank you. I would so, like the sentiment just because someone everyone else or someone else is doing it. but but see it's, it's, it's they're all, they're going out and reading meters no matter what and no, that's, that's our job reading, no they're not they're not doing the drive-by read thing of your monthly meter reading if on the 15th of the month you're going you're setting up your account they've got to drive out to your property at that time look at it it and takes five it. minutes to drive anywhere this time okay so I'm, I, I see the council pretty split on this, three and three it looks like. Um, I know this isn't a tie-breaking vote or anything, but I'm kind of leaning. No, no, it's not a vote, it's not a vote. But, um, whether we put it on, I think we're gonna have some more discussion on this. I'm gonna turn the heads on this one. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards um, not charging this just because I think it's part of, you know, when you set up a bit, you know, set up a new account, I, I think that's part of the, I, I get the arguments. I, I, I don't want to go back and forth with you. I, I get it. Um, so we'll discuss this more and we'll bring it back. Let's look at some other um, other issues that the uh, council wants to look at. Look at. Is there any other ones that you disagree with? The only other thing is like what I was talking about with the, uh, the toad one. That same thing to apply with the other appeals. Can we scroll up, please? If you have a civil or criminal appeal, right? Oh, it's, that's enough. <coughs> oh, okay. oh. Okay. Obviously, so, it's like because anyone can appeal things. anything. I think those are already. Uh, this no, 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 they're already there. there. What I mean is, so if you do an appeal and you win your appeal, I think we should yeah. refund their that fee. And, and I agree with that yeah. I mean, because you would have never had to file the appeal if the person who had your vehicle towed sure. did the right thing the first first time. So, I mean, that becomes a dig same thing the with the uh, thing on the city. Well, let's stay on that one though. The civil and criminal. Let's, let's just stay with it. The civil appeal, if I may just um, add, I just want to clarify that a little bit. That is actually not a fee that we charge. Um, this is for a civil infraction appeal. If somebody gets a speeding ticket, 
and the contesting court judge uh, decides or finds them that they did commit the offense and they want to appeal it, then that file actually goes to Superior Court. That's where all the appeals happen, and that's where they have to pay that fee. So we have no control okay. of this civil filing fee. Thank you. Yes. Good explanation. Yeah. But for the Johan fee, anyone disagree with the majority here? If it's wrong, then I think it should be get a refund. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, but everyone's good with charging that fee, though. Up front, yeah. Because uh, if yeah, there's it, it, anyone who gets yeah, there, not only do you get your tilt fee back, the vehicle back, but you get seventy-three dollars back. Yeah. Okay. Anyone who gets their car towed is going to try to do the appeal to get it back. It yeah. doesn't mean they were actually right. And this is, doesn't happen that often, anyway. So right now, it's not a big impact. Okay. All right. Any others? All right. We'll probably move forward when, with uh, minus the couple corrections that council had um, issues with, and go from there. Thank you, Joy. No problem. Thank you for our heads. Mayor's report. All right, the only thing that I want, and I'm sorry, actually, if you want to go into, we were going to add, I'm not sure why I wasn't added to the agenda on this, it was just a mistake. Talk about, gotcha, my apologies then. Um, Mayor support, the only thing I wanted to remind folks on is the rent choice voting, um, kind of what the plan is for next week. And can we, uh, at the time, at five o'clock, there is what, five applicants? Did that change? Okay, so we have five applicants. Uh, we actually had seven, though, correct? Two of them were outside the city limits. Um, so we have five to um, to discuss. What the council does, um, per direction from council at the last meeting, uh, council will interview the applicants. We would suggest, um, just from kind of management perspective, I guess, but I think you should consider it too, is having one applicant at a time in the room. So they're not hearing the, um, what the other answers. Mm -hmm. It's kind of disadvantage for you know the last person, here, or it's a disadvantage for the first person versus the last person. They have time to uh, hear what they're saying and can adjust and all that. Um, is everyone good with that? No. Have did you pick a like an electronic form of doing this, or are we doing it manually? Yeah, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the next thing would be the interviewing of the candidates themselves. Um, we're hoping to get your questions prior, um, if possible. If council's really against this, that's fine. We can um, just go off the cuff. But we're suggesting that we have um, questions that the council wants to ask everyone. And you can, again, ask different questions. But um, in order to um, make it as fair as we can for candidate to candidate, so they're, we're asking the same questions for each one um, rather than random questions for just random um, candidates. Personally, for me, I it's good. Once I look at their app, I mean, it's going to change of what I want to hear from that person. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm like in the past. A lot of times, everyone asks the same question. It doesn't always work. How, how about this? How about if council would submit um, questions that they want to ask, and then we allow time to go off um, some of those and like additional questions just off the cuff. Would that? Yeah, we can okay. to see the applications. We will um, get there, but we'll we'll okay. think about it. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay. So but if, for that, just for that. Is my understanding then that if he has three questions, he has two, he has five, she has six, I have five. I recommend just four. have one each. One and then they all then you can ask others additional after that. But okay, so then who's asking the question then during the meeting? Either the city council, it's up to you. You can each ask your own question, you can have me ask some questions. Or do you want to do it? It's up to you. I'm just trying to figure out why we're having to submit our questions. Who's doing the review of questions? No one's doing any review. It's just to have them all lined out. I'm not going to alter your questions. I prefer the way we've done it in the past, where okay. we just go around and we ask, we each ask questions. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I may know one applicant seen around know more about them than mm -hmm. the other one. So I'm going to ask them different questions because I know candidate A, but I don't know candidate B, so I know what candidate A stands on this. I may ask, so it's nice to ask them different. That's right. Yeah, there's another person. Will, I know other people will, like they'll plan ahead, but literally, I'm not going to know what I want to ask this person until we sit there. Fair enough. Council on board with that, then? Yeah. Okay. We will um, not have prepared questions for the council for the applicants. Um, 
Other than that, council will go into executive session um, after all the applicants um, have interviewed with their council. Is that still to, um, to discuss the qualifications? Mm -hmm. Is that still what the council wants to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Quick question. Yep. You mentioned only having one in there. Are we going to have the others outside or just yeah, outside just out the lobby? And we're still going to be able to hear what we're asking. Technically, I mean, yeah, they could. They could also watch it, but you know, we're just asking. You know, it just in the moment in there, it's fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, now let's go over the council, the rate choice voting, um, how that would work out. We do have a, um, Kathy put together these um, little rate choice voting grids, basically, that we'll have um, for each for each of the five different applicants. Um, each council member will be given a voting grid right here and rank, rank applicants one through five, their first choice through their fifth choice. If there's a clear winner, um, we'll work, so it'll take four votes, oh, excuse me, um, if there's a clear winner, yeah, with four votes, because the council has, has six members in this, this time, um, the voting's over, that person wins. So the first, if, let's say um, applicant A receives four votes the first round, that person is it. Uh, if there's not a clear winner, the bottom two applicants are eliminated, and there's a second round of voting, and we start that process all over again. So we're not doing instant runoff? Excuse me? Instant runoff would be, this is the whole point of rate choice. So candidate A, B, and C. A gets three votes, B got two, C got one. Okay, as, number, as the number one choice. Now, whoever put, let's say whoever put C as their number one, put A as their number two. Because C got the least amount of votes, that person's vote would then go to whoever the second choice is, which would go to A, which would then become who the winner is. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it that way. It's it's not ridiculous. The no, whole no, point. That, that's the way ranked choice voting works. I know, I know no, what I'm saying. Like it. The entire point of ranked choice voting is to find the person that is the most consensus agreement of everyone. Now, does that mean 100% of people are always going to agree on who wins? No, but what it does is it eliminates the, I have to vote for this guy or this guy. What it is, is you got A and B that are Republican Democrat, okay? Everyone feels like I gotta vote for one of them. So screw everyone else that's running. What rate, the whole point of rate choice is it allows you the opportunity to vote for someone that you might actually like better than these two people. But if they were to not win, you have your backup of how you would feel you need to go. If that makes I don't see sense. why they go into back up into A position when they were last, but now they go into A, is what you said. No, well, that's not what it's no, no, no. In C that example, whoever C was C that yeah. only got one vote as their number one yeah. choice, they, they're knocked out. Okay. Now, the person that put C as their number one, mm. so if I put C as my number okay. one, right. they got knocked out. Yeah. Now, whoever I put as my number two is now where my vote goes. And since I put A as my number two, my vote goes to A. Now A has four votes and they won. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that what you to try? That would be the fair consensus across the board. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll move on with that. We'll, and, and we're we'll doing this in writing, John? I'm not. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, yes. So you want to have our writing right. names? <laughs> And then, yeah. and then, yeah. and then, yeah. and then, yeah. and then, 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 Find out the same email, but I'll send out another email recapping what we just talked about um, in the process again, just so you have it. Um, okay. Any questions? And this is at the next meeting. This is at the next yeah. meeting, right? This will give you about basically a week to uh, review and do what you want. Okay. Yeah, and you're more than welcome to contact these people outside one on ones and all that. Um, just I've done that in the past, but yeah. it's up to you. Not together this far. Um, any other questions on that? All right, that was the biggest thing I had. Um, what? Um, initiatives. Yeah. 
excuse me, initiatives. Carrie? Oh, another one. <laughs> well, I thought you were just asking in general. <laughs> well, we, we, I have an important um, initiative actually, and that is um, Joe and I attended the last creative district task force. And it's really important that we get more money, we get money to do this project. So we, I'm requesting that we put this on the budget and my understanding it's very similar to our beautification project. The, fund, the state will match funds that we put into this project. And we're allowed, I think initially $7,000 to begin the process and then a $40,000 grant. So what they're asking for upfront on gathering is 94,000 of which we get 47,000 back. That's a little bit steep there for this budget we'll this late in the cycle, but um, we'll for what? Is that right, Joe? Um, I think that was the right? understanding is they, they would match. And so, yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I attend the first one and I don't think it's that much that the upfront is at 7,000, which we did budget for. We have, um, I think 14,000. Stephanie for herbs. Yeah, but anyway, we do have, if we need to increase it a little bit to cover that initial bill. Um, the other part is the, um, the matching grant. And yeah, that we can use, um, I, I think that's better for a council amendment when we actually do it, uh, whenever, whatever project they, the Arts Commission decides they wanna do. Well, I think we, all of this is based on city involved with yeah. it. so i think we have to have this in place before we can actually uh, the seven thousand of you not the it doesn't cost that much to do the whole process um to, to go through it okay. um, just need to yeah. get it out there before the time passes but yes yeah. so, with this if it's ninety ninety six thousand dollars or fourteen thousand that's a good chunk of money mm -hmm. and all i'm hearing is project there's no, are there any minutes? Is there anything that we can get an idea, a briefing of what went on during that meeting for those who could not attend because of either work or some other outside thing? Because there's also a whole community of yeah. members that, you know, our community members are going to also kind of want to know what's going on in particular. For well, we wish for they would really come to the meetings because everybody is invited. The no, state no, has an application process, a paper that's this thick. It's a huge process that we're working through. The first thing we did last meeting was we have to uh, physically create the district where the creative arts district will be. So we worked out on that diligently last meeting and then it goes from there. And so what I think uh, Councilman Hess is saying, because I, I, I kind of see where he's going is in order to have money mm -hmm. budgeted, in the first place, we have to have some kind of a vision and communication across the board to community get behind and even support anything. Okay. And I, and I Actually, think, yeah. our communication director was there, so I'll help her prepare the report. No, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. No, 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 just, no, I understand what you mean. No. This is all new, so again, we're, we're just trying to get how the process goes. But then, but yeah, we need to request the money. Fair response. Yeah. Fair response. Um, fair, uh, this is an appropriate place to ask about mm -hmm. it, though. So. We'll look into it. Uh, I have one other question. There seems to be a lot of talk, and I know this is not our jurisdiction, but people all over are asking about this new proposed airport change <laughs> location. Uh, I know it's not for us to do, but is there any, do we have any? Yes. Yeah. It's right in our backyard. So somewhere. the county asked for um, all jurisdictions to uh, sign on to a letter asking not to be considered for it um, oh. due to traffic okay. and traffic and infrastructure um, impacts. I haven't decided yet if we're gonna, gonna sign on to it. Um, I don't just, think we should. Just from my perspective as mayor. Can handle our own traffic? Um, <laughs> just as my perspective as mayor to sign on or not, which I have that authority to do. Um, I'm leaning towards signing on, so asking that them not to, um, joining in with all the other jurisdictions There's, against it. I, I understand okay. that it's totally your decision. Um, I think what a lot of people are not considering is do they want it? No. But the fact of the matter is this area needs another airport as far as West Washington. And the fact of the matter is this area is the only place that actually makes any sense. Now, is that Lewis County, Thurston, some, I don't know, but this South End 
to the only place that actually makes any sense for it. You already have one in Bellingham, you have one in Everett, you have one in Seattle, you have one in Tacoma. It doesn't make any sense to put another international in airport in Auburn only 15, 20 minutes away. The whole point is to have one between Portland and Seattle, which this, that's where this is. It, can, it will totally eliminate, if you're flying, having to drive from here to Seattle. And whether you like it or not, Western Washington is not what it, it's not going to be what we all know it as anymore. So are you advocating for it? Yeah. My view on it is, and it's following what the discussion has been going on. Yes, I know that there's a lot of, it takes away, a lot of people are concerned about, you know, we want our open space, we want this, all these other things. But at the same time, as Councilman Blow put it, this is one, this is a plan 20 to 30 years out. In other words, they're in the process of just trying to find where are we going to put it so that we can start doing the planning for the development. The roads will get planned. Things will get planned. What I've asked for and following what our legislature uh, representatives have been talking about, one uh, legislator uh, representative Barkas is on the transportation committee, so he's going to be very much involved with looking at this. And um, uh, Representative uh, Wilcox, uh, what he's he knows of the two in Pierce and the one in Thurston, and right now that's what, according to the requirements, that's what they've come up with. And yes, we can ask for it to go back. What, we're, what I've been advocating for is we need to make sure that there is an actual open, honest, and transparent conversation that we hear not just from business owners, corporations, and people who in a closed door, that we need to get the community talking because what, uh, what could be is advocating that it just be a regional airport. In other words, it's not the big 747s, 7, uh, 777s, or anything else like that. Maybe the International for Seats Act have a regional one here that will allow you to get to the, um, in trucking terms, the Western 11 states. In other words, it's the up, down, and it's a small aircraft. It could be your puddle hoppers, whatever it may be. And that will allow, that will help alleviate SeaTac because they can't grow anymore. But now, because you take some of those regional flights out of SeaTac, and put them in um, pain, which is north, and then down here, they can now start taking in more international flights. And again, this is 20, 30 years down the line before they even break ground. And so that's the, that's the discussion. And so there's gonna be a lot of planning, a lot of development with it. If we close our minds off right now and say, nope, and do a big fight for it, we don't know what opportunities, what could have happened, or we may do the big fight, and then because we dig our heels in so far, we aren't even at the table to be part of the discussion when they say, hey, it's going to happen. And right. need to, and Another thing. There. No, so you, you're as saying. I said, you, you said you have that right to say, well, I as mayor of city. That's not what I was talking about. I was oh. going to say that. But, uh, Troop jurisdiction wise, right. well, they're going to have to deal with us. We're going to all have a seat at the table. If it's in Thurston County, absolutely, we have a seat at the table. Right. But I'm going to do it without our. Um, without consulting us, without working for infrastructure increases, for improvements, and all that stuff. But, As I said, I know you, you can do what you want, but I'm putting my view out there of we need to have this open discussion and understanding this isn't a five year, hey, it's built and boom, we've got everything going on. This is looking at 20. Or 30 30 30. It's not going to be, that was never a discussion. It, it, it was never a discussion with the International Airport. It was a regional from the get go. Yeah. So, no, so like said, I just don't want people thinking it. No, no, I know it wasn't an international. Just in my like opinion, that. by the mayors of Thurston getting together and saying, we don't want this, don't include us, please don't. You're doing a negative thing. You don't think have you ever flown, have you ever, have you ever flown into LA area? I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. So LAX, total chaos. Oh, no. Flying to John Wayne. It takes me about 10 minutes to go through security in LAX. Getting in and out of there? Yeah. I'm not talking about security, I'm talking about the area. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. All the traffic. You fly into John Wayne, you're in and out of there. And John Wayne's right in the middle of neighborhoods. Granted, this is not Southern California, mm -hmm. but 
they've got a regional airport where you got Southwest, uh, Alaska, all those smaller carriers flying in and out of there all day. Now, the people that live directly around it, you, know, you have the noise issues. But like my grandmother lives down there. It's a 15, 20 minute drive to John Wayne Airport. Never hear a plane once on a map house. Yeah. So, from my perspective, I think we're in the middle of both Pierce County and the Pearson County options. It's going to impact us either way. Um, I, I do believe it's going to be less of an impact with Pierce County, especially if they go with the Northern Choice. And it's still fairly close, a lot closer um, than SeaTac for our residents here. Um, so, anyway, I'm just considering it. That this wasn't even my question. It's a two runway aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not. It's they're supposed to deliver their um, recommendation to the legislature um, next year. Um, so it's. It's, it's not a place for the smaller carriers. I'm not going to come down. Do you have anything else, Jerry? No, I'm not going to come down. Thank you, Jerry. I'm just going to talk to you about that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, so with all of this COVID nonsense from the governor finally being completely gone in about less than a month, um, I think we need to do away with all this Zoom crap and stop spending money on it. <laughs> what do you mean? Stop spending the money on Zoom meetings. People need to come back, be in person again. What in what video Zoom meetings are you referring to? All of it. What do you want? What what Zoom meetings are you like right now? We're spending money on Zoom meetings right now at this council meeting. We're spending Zoom, spending money on in the court Zoom. It's not free. I know it's not free at a in, at this level. Zoom's only free for a single individual that you're popping on with a couple of your friends. Uh, I know it's not cheap. I don't know the exact price, but I know we're spending money on it. And if COVID did one thing. It spread a whole lot of money to tech companies. And me personally, I'm done with it. And I think we should be done with it. So, question. Yeah. Well, can I chime in here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I, I did want to talk about, sorry, just to, about the whole way we're doing these study sessions. To me, when we initially talked about moving the study sessions to a new place, being more casual, people talking freely to me, this is me, I feel like this is just another council meeting that we're not making decisions. We're, it's very, um, not only is it being filmed, but we're, and I I love our American flag, but we're doing, we're making it so formal that to me it doesn't feel like a study session. So I looked into the open public meeting app and everything that I read, Definitely, it has to be posted. Definitely, people can come. But I don't understand why we're still, like, like Jane said, filming and having it out there. Um, it just, to me, this doesn't feel any different than a meeting, than a council meeting. In reference to the filming, I think we should continue doing that. I don't have a problem with filming. We, we should still also continue doing the Zoom option. Why? Here's, why? I'm a truck driver. If I all of a sudden have to do over the road for three weeks at a time, I'm going to be having to constantly write in going, I need to be excused, I need to be excused, but yet I can stop and I can zoom in and I can be part of the meeting. Previously, we did that. You just called in. Yeah. We did that before COVID. And why not do, why not use the Zoom? So that I can see. Because what making a phone call is free. Zoom. I don't know exactly how much we're paying, but then I think before we make a decision on that, we should find what the cost is because it's. it's I've asked plenty of times, no one wants to give me an answer. Sandra, do you know? You had your. No, I was just gonna, if I may, just uh, uh, from a course perspective, I can't speak for everybody else, but from a course perspective, I don't know the cost either, but I do know that we have more people appearing with uh, doing uh, Zoom. Because it, it's access to justice as well. That's 
the way we're seeing it. Sometimes we have some in the federal town or state um, employment or whatnot, and they're able to appear to the court via Zoom. So I will push for that and I will fight for continuing. Plus, that's really in the area where we're moving in reality. I mean, people can appear in court via their phone. So access to justice. I'm all for Zoom for the council meetings. I don't necessarily see a problem with that. I understand where you're coming from. I'm talking strictly about the study sessions. To me, they feel like they've just morphed into this. I don't think we need to put up our hands in this meeting. I agree. Okay. But I don't even know. It still feels so formal. It's kind of like when we, when we went to the retreat. It was posted. It was public. Nobody showed up. That's their prerogative. But I feel like in a it, I feel like we've created this atmosphere where it's not total freedom like it used to be. We're not trying to hide anything. It's not that at all. It's just, I don't know. What do you mean what, as it used to be? Um, I know that I used to come to these and it was more of just kind of a round table. It felt more like a round table discussion. And when I think of a round table discussion, I just mean you're not staring at yourself. You're just kind of talking about things. It's not super formal. You're not necessarily taking role. Um, you do take, I was reading through all this, you have to have minutes, you have to have notes taken, and I get all that. That's just, it's how I feel, and I have, and whether they speak up or not, I have had council members ask me about this as well. But so I just, what would it look like then? What it would look like to me is we, we could meet here, or we could meet someplace else, but we don't have that. Um, I Everything I read in here says that you're encouraged to make the audio and video. Everything says you're encouraged to, it doesn't say you have to. I just, I don't know. When you say this, what do you mean? Okay, so we're staring at ourselves. <laughs> um, I, I guess I'm envisioning more of a- Like a board table. Like a board table, yeah. and you're, you're sitting there and you're, you know, you have your presentations, you have the things you want to discuss and we talk. More in a casual environment, not, not having more than maybe not. Uh, <laughs> we can push the tables and I want to sit closer to Jane. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, that's, that's how I feel. Lay back more. Lay back. Not other like we need snacks. Other uh, council members? Joseph or Governor Richardson? Yeah. I think a lot would get done in this study session to really be able to share opinions and have freedom to really express things. I know James wants to express things, but then we have to be careful how we <laughs> behave and watch your language, which I understand at some point, but I think study sessions, which can be transparent in any way as well, but we really need to get down to the nitty gritty and have some conversation. And, uh, and we then, can, yeah. We can, just because it's recorded doesn't mean that, well, okay, it, what do you envision the notes being? Well, we talked about for tonight, uh, we had a review of the fee resolution given by Director Cole. There's your minute on the board. What, what was discussed? Well, we discussed, we reviewed the fee resolution. That is literally taking the minutes. By having this here, if I all of a sudden go, oh man, I remember we had a really good discussion. There's some give and take on some things. Let me go back and review so that I can see what was said so that next week when I come forward or two weeks from now, when the resolution is brought up, I'd say, hey, we discussed this portion of it. Why, why is it not changed? And if, if I recall, and I'm thinking back years ago before COVID, I do, something's telling me that they were audio recorded. I don't know if anybody remembers. So I was on council mm -hmm. right, right when we changed. I was okay. that it didn't change <laughs> um, from what you're yeah. suggesting to where okay. we're at. But prior to what, um, or I, I didn't do it alone, obviously, okay. but um, um, we did record it audio. Um, I don't believe we video recorded at that time, um, but that was the big push that I want, not for myself, not for to get better um, conversation or less conversation, but from my perspective, everything we do here is people's business, uh, whether it's what we're talking about in Private, I mean, when private. Um, if we're talking about city business, it's public information. And it just puts a barrier for someone to 
have to ask for the audio because back then it was you had to request it wasn't necessarily um been available like it is on youtube where you can watch it like right now so for me anything that adds to the to make it harder for a, a random resident to watch what's going on in their government it, i'm going to be opposed to personally i, I fall hard in increased transparency and i really do think it would be taking a step back we're doing the public's business here it's they have every right to attend and I, I get it. The reason why there was no one, and that's kind of why we did it in Ocean Shores, was to kind of discourage people from attending. But if someone, I guarantee you, if some random citizen wanted to show up, that would have changed the dynamic up 100%. And what I was going to ask is, where are the minutes from that? Because we have to have minutes. I would love to. Uh, no, no, no. We don't have to. I don't believe we have to have minutes. We have to host the meetings. Not every meeting requires a uh, city council meeting. A study session has to require okay. minutes. But yeah, we, if, we ran, if, we, if we ran a study session like we did with our retreat, was, I would love to see what the minutes would say. <laughs> I would love to see what the minutes would say because I can be. I wouldn't have acted any different if anyone showed up. I'll just be clear right there. Sure, you might not, but there's other council members that may, may not. But you know, well, that's this is what I was. I, I just think that, I mean, we're doing well. If you want to make this more relaxed, put your phones down. Stop. The only thing that needs to be done is, hey, who's here? Following people are here. All right, let's start talking. And if we talk over each other, we talk over each other. And if it gets to the point where it comes out of control, like kids yelling and screaming at the dinner table, mom takes over and starts calling names. Yeah. We still record it. I don't care about the being No, and I still believe that we need to keep the Zoom going. And we actually need to start encouraging all the other functions of government that are public meetings. We need to get them recorded and on Zoom so that, as was stated, the, you're talking about public funds. The, art, the uh, Arts Commission working on trying to get our creative districts. And if they came forward and said, hey, we need $96,000, whoa, what, what are you talking about now? You thought what happened with the three pictures that were proposed? Imagine coming to the council. Imagine coming to the council and saying, hey, we want $96,000. Just for the rest of Time, but you know that no no, no we're, we're having a conversation no, we're having a conversation that's what we yeah, want you guys are talking over each other no one can hear what's going on what are you saying yes, yes, so, so if i'm saying like exactly what i'm saying, 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 saying this yeah. you heard what but you were as saying, i said it's hard to hear what you're doing but you know back to council member blair who says we need to get rid of zoom no I think it's great because not only is Zoom one allows me to still, as a council member, when I have to be on the road to communicate and see what's going on, but every resident of the town, if they are making dinner for their three kids because they just came home from soccer practice and who knows whatever at not. six o'clock, it's available to them. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that it's still available because if we don't, it just reinforces to those that say, why bother? Council members don't want to listen to us. The mayor doesn't want to listen to us. Why bother going and talking to them? Because they're going to just make up their own minds on what they want to do based upon the people that support them. I'm not, I don't care about the cameras. I don't care about it being posted online for people to watch and hear. I don't care about any of that. What I'm saying is stop spending money on Zoom, handing it over to, to freaking tech companies. So that's what I'm saying. So what's, that's the all I'm saying. Is, what's the alternative? Record it, post it on where we were posting it, but stop paying for Zoom. Then what I'd we don't like need ask, what I'd like to ask is Mayor Pento, can we please by the second council meeting get a cost estimate of what it truly costs? What comes out of the general fund to pay for us to run a Zoom meeting? Real fast, Jason. You see, had some numbers on it. Zoom? Yeah, they're not going to be exact, but we pay roughly seven hundred and fifty dollars per year for the license that runs this webinar. And it's not just this meeting that's run on that webinar; it's other meetings throughout the city. Uh, and so it's pretty inexpensive for what we offer the public on Zoom. Yes, seven hundred and fifty dollars for the public to be able to communicate to their council members, be part of a planning commission meeting be part of a art commission meeting. That can't be correct. That's what it is. 
and just that, setting up to if that is have cost, 10 people on that? Zoom if it is was like a $1,000 a month. But if that is the cost, Council Member, are you okay with that? If it's 750 for the year, sure, but I don't think that's what it actually is. Well, well, as, I, as I asked, by the second meeting of this month, can we please have an actual cost estimate of what the cost is to run a Zoom meeting, not just for the City Council, but for the whole city? No, you can't. You can have in a couple of days. I asked for the last, <laughs> last month. Well, you said buy So that was the last time in the month. Yeah, we can do that. Because so, then, because we need to really start encouraging other commissions that meet to also go to the Zoom meeting for people who may not be able to attend at 10 o'clock in the morning, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. People work. I don't know about you guys, but there are people who work who might want to all of a sudden speak before the planning commission. Their meeting is at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I think what Holly's asking is if we can just be a little more less formal and more conversation. Yeah, we're asking two different things. Yeah, it's right, different. Different. Two different things. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's let's get on James um, issue with the zoom real fast. And let's kind of solidify that. And then we'll move to yeah. All right. I just feel that there's there's more value in being in person, period. With these meetings, thankfully, we have enough we're all comfortable coming in and being here. A lot of other city, cities are still not doing that for whatever reason. And that's that's their own thing. But for me personally, there's an element of being sitting in here in person and yelling at each other that you're not going to get on the screen. And I understand that. how many meetings has there been when there's been more than two people absent on council though? What? And I'm just saying, most of these meetings since I became mayor on you know January one, we have been in person. The Zoom capabilities is still there for people that you know. If it was COVID related, they can still participate that way. If it's not COVID related, like what Councilor Hess was talking about, they can still participate this way. This doesn't take away by having it, in my opinion, and it doesn't take away from what we're doing here because everyone's in person here. And that's what my administration has done is gotten us back in person. Yeah. You know, and so I like, think that. Yes. Well, yeah, that's what Council wanted to and the people, I think. But regardless of that, we are back in person. This adds an additional level for people to participate in, but not necessarily be able to. If it's truly only $750 a year that the city's spending for the license to use Zoom, cool, I will shut up. But I really but if it's don't. not. <laughs> if it's not, man, I don't think it is. Because I've looked into it to, to set up a license account where it was like 15 users and it was not 750 bucks a year. I, I think that number sounds about right, but we will get a, um, an actual estimate, not estimate, an actual figure um, from the finance department, from um, Jason, the IT department. We will we'll figure out how much we're paying for it and we'll let council know. Fair? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yes. I want to say my opinion. <laughs> I like Zoom. Um, for the simple fact, there's no excuse for citizens. You have a means public. You can be here. If you can't be here, you can tune in. If you don't do any of those, you still complain. You're without excuse because every option is available for you to participate in your government. And so, the only thing I would say, yeah, these the state sessions need to be more relaxed. You know, we don't need our name tags. We know each other. Um, for instance, I don't know how to make it a little more relaxing. Yeah, <laughs> maybe some snacks. Who knows? Some decorations. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the Zoom's good uh, for that reason. Because there's people like like Stephanie who tunes in every week. Because she can't make it. She runs a business. She has a family. You know, but she wants to be involved. And wants to know what's going on. This is an avenue that she can be able to participate, which can be there, and other people as well. So I think that's good. And hopefully we're not spending an extra hour. I mean, look at state-level government. Canada. This, this is I'm just saying, look how look, here. these types of meetings and stuff, it's not there's they're yelling back, at each other. They're starting to get back to in person too. Transportation back for the first transportation. No, 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 no. I mean like if watch uh, like the UK legislature or, or Canada's no. parliament or whatever. <laughs> I'm just no no, I'm taking the example. It's more like they're we're yelling at each other and working stuff out and, and yeah. figuring it out. You know what I mean? And as I said, we can go. I, I like what Holly wants to, what the 
Councilmember Smith. Good transition. The next. Yes. Okay. Well, that, I like may I just ask, ask? Do we have the city council person? Yeah, if that's, that's formal, that's Polly. Polly. Yes. Yes. My yes. suggestion is that we get rid of the yeah. name tags. Okay. I'm with we that. call by your first name. Yeah, and just oh, if call. If you want. Unless it gets out, I mean, you know, have somebody. I don't care. Tell me whatever. It's not me. But as I was going to say, what what she would like to do, I think is very reasonable. And I think one of the ways to go about doing it is to make it informal is, she says, start the meeting and a roll call at a bare minimum. Why, why you can do a roll call? So you know who's here. Well, so it's- We can see who we can see. It's, 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 for, it's for the public, it's for that portion there. So they are, but they know the difference. But again, then, then it, I don't know. Okay, well, well the first thing is that you require the council members to be on. Yeah. Um, because if it's required, I think you would have, you to, have, roll, have to take role. a role. You have to have a role. So you and support it. That, 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 they would say. It's in this actual city. Yes council. and no. It's, it's not like it's with a city council meeting. If special. we don't have X number of people, we can't have a meeting. Yeah. yeah. So study, study session. Study session you can, we can do it without. Or, do it with that. I was going to say, we can do the study session. And as I said, it's like the dinner table, if you want to think of it that way, to where all of a sudden all the kids are yelling and screaming, talking over each other. Nobody can hear what's going on. She runs the meeting. She says, everybody shut up and calls upon the person. Yeah. If she doesn't want to do that, she just wants to allow everybody to tell yeah. yeah. that's the way the meeting is. Right. No, I don't think that people should just be able to. Very no, I don't have to be. <laughs> but I kept getting the, you know, after these no guys, disrespect, but come on. After you no. guys do your initiatives, I have another question. Okay, so what do we, I mean, I know we don't make decisions here, but what about no name tags? Sorry, so, right. so what, what do you, what would you what, no name tags or one? No name tags. We can still offer Zoom to the public, but we can turn that screen off. Yeah, I mean, that's what much. I would like to see, but I'd love to hear what they are coming <laughs> about. I'd like to open up in prayer. I'm not sure. I'd like to see that. It's literally it's your meeting. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. open. I obviously want the input. Figure it out as we go and make adjustments. And uh, we just need to make sure that study sessions go over two hours. So we would be good. Yeah. Um, Nailed it. <laughs> but I feel like I'm learning a lot, so I'm not grabbing about the time. Okay. So when I'm here for the council, from now on, we won't have name tags. We'll turn the screen off. Um, we're still recording video and audio. Um, we're not calling each other by council members unless they want to be called by that. No more nudging calling. No, no, I firmly nudge. <laughs> I firmly nudge. Joe's going to get it. Chair of the court. I'll say it all quite down a little bit. It's no, you're oh, right now. So uh, uh, but those are the big things, right? Yeah. And it's it's just, just, you know, like you said, that's a culture thing. And now, you know, the uh, administrator was talking about changing the culture in, in the city hall, which you have. I think we're trying to change the culture here in uh, city council. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what this is coming across is you've done a great job with the culture change. We want to continue that culture change here, be less crude, be more real, be more authentic. But we want to be pro when we have our city council meetings, we'll be pro, we'll be fine. James will not so try not to. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Ye
thing I would like to ask <laughs> is that we have staff presentations by somebody like the Colt, City Administrator Stansel, the Chief. And we at least give them that respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. we don't talk over them, we give them the court before. Oh, well, I think, well, I'm just yeah. trying to make sure that that is an understood thing that they still get that respect because we are, they, they got off at five o'clock. They had like, with, if they're up, if someone's up here presenting, that's, I'll put my hand up and wait for okay. them to. As I said, I just want to yeah, make yeah. sure that, you know, when, it's, when we're having our own discussion, it's not a problem. But when we have, we need to make sure we give the staff their respect that they deserve. Absolutely. Well, okay. Excuse me. Um, put my hand down. Just before we leave, can somebody please give me? Still have three more additional people. So okay. Just don't. Just get it out. Before <laughs> say it. No, what I do. Yeah, well, 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 somebody leave. tell me exactly what I need to do for this budget thing. What do I? What am I required? Do you want a report? Do you want a thing at the next meeting? What do, how do I do that? So. I mean, it, it's too late right now for additional requests. It's, if there is, if it's a larger cost like that, I mean, the budget's been pretty well developed. Yeah, yeah, well, can we get the arts well, hold on. Let me, we can um, add that for sure. We've already gone for this 7000 or so. Um, we've already budgeted for more than that in the next, in, the, uh, in this budget. Um, but get an actual number for us. That is the number. 40000 plus the seven. I, I, I don't think it is. Yes, it is. John, it's Terry. That's the, the grant is coming to 40000 but we have to put in 40000 We have to put in double that to get the half back. Or what is the grant for? Oh, to create the creative district. To get the $40,000 from the federal government to put toward the district for funding. For a project. And not necessarily, not for the actual district. I was there at the first meeting. It, that wasn't my understanding. Joseph, correct me. It's, it's to get things for the for the creative district established, I believe. And isn't that what it is? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't believe that's what it is. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure, entirely sure. The 7,000 is for the creation of it. Right. right? That is. But the 40,000, they say up to 40,000 matching money. Match so money. if we want to do a project with the windmills or the whatever it is, if it costs $30,000, let's say, um, if the city puts in $15,000, the, um, the government, the state would put in fifteen thousand in matching. If a project costs, let's say eighty thousand dollars, and the city says we we want that, we'll put up to forty thousand dollars, and the state would match that to be eighty. So it's about a matching thing. But what we need to reemphasize is money. Will not I, I really don't see people supporting anything if they don't know what the clear vision. And, and, right, and but that's... so who's responsible for? You know, I get it. What I what if you if you'd like to know what I would like to see is you said we drew the we drew the district. Where's the district? What are the okay. streets? What does it include? When we what is, find that we would bring it? What yes. is the vision? What do you see being the um, theme or you know those various things? Because right now, again, so uh, after every task force meeting, I just come in and give a report of what we're doing. That type of thing. Basically, um, yeah. And we should also be getting notes from the um the chair as well. And yeah. So we'll get more of it. I just we'll, yeah. you want to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand. So, and we will. I'm committed to making that happen as well. I, I think it's a valuable thing for our community. Um, and, but again, I, that 40000 I I'm 100 percent it's not for Dr. That. George. That was my understanding. This the 7000 for we were really clear on that. We all wrote it yeah. down. So we'll what, what it sounds like there. is that seven grand is what establishes the art. The, Creative Arts District. And then you were talking about the matching grant. Mm -hmm. What from first, like, they, and they've already got the 7,000 for us to do all the applications and create the, the Creative Arts District, whatever it is. Moving forward, now the Arts Commission needs to think of projects, specific projects, figure out what it's going to cost with whatever est estimates or whatever they've got. And that's when they then come to us with whatever the project is they want to do. And then with that project, if we approve it, then we apply for the matching grant. I'm it, not sure, but I'll find out. Exactly. It sounded like there was a $40,000 grant available that we would get to move for, for a project. Out. Exactly. It just yeah, we have to have a project first. To ask for money without having something to present what it is. And that's why we need to slow down at the creative task force 
and the arts commission needs to slow down and have conversation rather than just expecting money. Um, I'm just expressing things. Maybe I should have set up a great task force meeting because everybody yes. wants to move so doggone fast, but they don't have any vision on what they want to produce. The first step is just getting the district. Yeah. yeah. There is no, there will be no support if there is not a good vision that identifies our community as well. Well, this is what we have to do is go out into the community. And if there's anybody listening, we need people. Um, to come and identify who we are, what makes us unique, and all that stuff that has to do with being approved by the state. So yeah. We need more volunteers. Do you have anything else for initiatives? So it comes out of sucks. What? Really enjoyed the meeting, guys. Thank you. Uh, no initiatives here. <laughs> I have a lot of this year in life, but I have nothing to discuss. Oh, man. Last time I turned. Yes. <laughs> Just walk out. That's not the end. Thank you for the name, Ted, Kathy. I appreciate it.